And we are back with another Black Widow Cream podcast, new episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. I'm your host, Ben Haggerty, a.k.a. Ben Reverse World. How y'all doing today? I hate when people fucking do that. I hate when people uh, ask questions on YouTube or whatever, like, hey, guys, what's up? Like, you're not going to, re- you can't respond to me. So I take it back. I just will assume that you guys are doing really well. Today's episode, we got a good one. My boy, Louis Vito, this motherfucker, his, his shit this guy's lived 50 lives. He's a professional snowboarder. He's been snowboarding professionally for like a decade. Um, traveled the entire globe snowboarding. He's got one of those cool little uh, passport things where you can get out of the country quicker because he does it so much, so many times. Lucky guy. Um, he was on Dancing with the Stars at his like pinnacle peak. Like I think he said, uh, don't don't quote me here, but I think he said that they would get like five million. They were getting five or 10 million, no, 22 million viewers per week when he was on air, which this is before Instagram and shit. So he was like this super celebrity uh, who fucking just was, had paparazzi chasing him and he was just famous and he's dancing, he has long hair, but he's a snowboarder. So he's just like fucking, you know, like a hang loose type dude that was just killing it and blew up. So he has like an interesting career and now he's working with like big big brands like toyota and and just crushing ass every winter he's out snowboarding non-stop from the beginning i don't know when snow starts falling technically i guess he just goes wherever the snow is so he could technically snowboard all year long but um yeah he he's a beast the story is really really cool i'm glad that we got him on the show uh from his perspective as a creator needing to create content as a snowboarder especially with the times changing from back in the day when you would have a part in a movie to now social is so prevalent like it, the transition is really interesting to hear his two cents on that is really cool and for creators that are interested in shooting action sports uh he offers a lot of value too from the side of of the person that you would be shooting so yeah i'm excited listen to this episode um if you're new to black window cream black window cream is a private content creator group fueled by caffeine at least i take my coffee black window cream but you can drink whatever the fuck caffeine you fuck with and still be a part of our community um we're basically a dope fucking spot for creators to come learn share motivate provide any value that you can to other creators all over the world we have a private community of about 5,000 members which is fucking cool not about we have over 5,000 almost 5,100 i think um, and they're mad active in the private community. They're always sharing their the, the current projects that they're working on. They're picking each other's brains and providing new value, which is amazing. So our goal is to do this podcast and try to squeeze as much juice out of top leading creators that we can and give it back to the community and then uh, build the most epic you know, educational platform on earth. So if you want to join the private community, go to bwnc.com slash join you can do that and if you would like to uh you know get involved just start by introducing yourself when you join the group and let people know what you do and uh yeah today's gonna be a good day we got a lot of shit done yesterday proud of proud of what we've been doing here at the black window cream headquarters um that's it by this time that you hear this episode to the public people i know my, my patreon people get every episode a week early so if you want to support on patreon go to patreon.com slash black window cream um our new patreon revamp will have happened okay so by the 23rd of may we will we were gonna we will be rolling out um our whole new P- patreon revamp i can't fucking talk today damn we basically have taken a stab at finding a way we have so we've had patreon for a couple months now and we have an amazing group of supporters that have come and gone and are consistently there writing writing for the team helping support and keep uh the lights on in our office space and then helping us you know get money so we can put budget into providing more value for the community but um, we realized that there was a lot of things that we can improve on and we need to be way more active within the Patreon community. So, so starting now in, in Louis's episode, uh, you'll, we have a Q and a that you can hear on Patreon after the show. We ask, we continue to ask Louis questions. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to get access to that, you just make sure you go to patreon.com slash black window cream to hear the rest of, uh, the Q and a with Louis. And there's a shit ton of other perks. So definitely go check out the video that we made so you can figure out if it's gonna make sense for you to support this shit because we need it all right cool 
If you want merch, shop BWC.com, pick up a shirt, send me a picture, make, get a hoodie. If I don't know, the hoodies, there's only like 20 left, so get the hoodie now before it's too late. And uh, that's it. Shout out to my mom because I know she's watching this. Love moms. And uh, that's it. So see you guys next week, you bitch. Attention. If you stop this podcast recording at any time, you will die. I don't want to die. Do you want to live? Yeah. You have 24 hours to share this podcast with five people or you will die. I'm kidding. You won't die. You're just weak shit for not sharing. And the winner of the best motherfucking podcast goes to... Goes to... Black with no cream. What do you think? It's so fucking dumb and so fucking Ben Haggerty. I knew you'd say that. And we're back with another Black with no cream podcast. Okay, this guy right across the table from me, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening on audio, imagine a table and a guy sitting across from me from that table. Louis Vito. How you doing, dog? I'm stoked to be here. Man. This is like an honor. I got to feel pretty cool when you this, asked me to do this. I was like, me, dude. heck yeah, let's do this. He texted me t- yesterday, two days ago. I'm in LA. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Come yeah. over to my fucking spot. It's time to go. It's like, time to do this. I'm surprised you could have been like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> No, nah, man, I've wanted to get you on the podcast forever. This is uh, you, you're never here in LA because you don't live here, obviously. Um, you're in Utah, yep, Park City, Salt Lake, Sandy, Salt Lake to be specific, Sandy, South Salt Lake, the dirty south. Okay, we're tight. The island, be how long have you lived there? Uh, almost 13 years now since yeah. I graduated high school. Oh, right, all right, cool. How far is that from Park City then? It uh, depends on your driving abilities, but like. 35, 40 minutes. Oh, okay, but no. I'm by like Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, Alta, which I can't go to because it's ski only, but we right. have four resorts like right by my house. Damn, ski only? That's pretty racist. We have two of the three resorts in the U.S. that don't allow snowboarding in Utah. Deer Valley by Park City and Alta. Wow. I never knew that that existed. Yeah. That's like some real cult shit. Yeah, it's like a blast from the past. You go. I mean, technically you're allowed to ride down the mountain. You just can't take the lifts up. So, like, I think, like, Burton did an edit where they, like, had a bunch of their riders poach it and, like, people freak and, like, swing their poles at them. Are you serious? Yeah. That's fucking tight. That's super (laughs) tight. That's some weird shit. But, yeah, I I mean, me at the young age of Rebellion, I would want to go fucking ham up there. I'd be like, yo, fuck this shit. We got to go ride this. They had a, there's a thing on YouTube. It was like, shit all to skiers say. (laughs) And it's like, you, like, listen to them. Like, they interview people in the parking lot and you're like, this was made, like, a couple years ago this wasn't made like 10 15 yeah. years ago like when it was yeah like really super. rebellious and not like what it is now like the number one sport watched in the olympics so. yeah sorry skiing but what do they say in the videos they're, talking they're about like shit? oh they they knock all the powder off the run <laughs> they're a bunch of punks like even Lindsay vaughn who's like i like Lindsay and i are cool and she like what she say like was it Last year, they're fucking riding with their feet. Their their peripheral vision so bad. They're always in the middle of the run fixing their gear. (laughs) Like what? (laughs) Are you kidding me? (laughs) We're just sitting there. Let me fix my gear real quick. I'm like, well, you guys are always making big giant turns. Yeah, you fucking slow ass, fucking doing that. (laughs) We need to have separate mountains. And she's like, we need to have separate runs. I'm like, you do have separate runs. They're called race lanes. You guys have so many race lanes. They're so annoying. Yeah, and the fucking mogul things. Yeah, well, she did, like, just hits gates. I want to do that. All right, hold on. We're, we're getting too random. All right, professional snowboarder you are. Oh, yeah. Influencer in the the language of uh, everything, basically. You fucking work out. You're an athlete. Yeah. You fucking host shit. You do, like, all try. kinds of wild stuff. Try. You Maybe future podcast host? Yeah, that'd be you're cool. You're just talking I'm gonna about? I'm going to try to do a little bit of everything. That's tight. I want to do, like, I got that. I want to try to get a documentary made. I want to do the TV stuff. I want to do pot. The problem is I have, I have ideas. I'm horrible at execution. Right. We talked about this in, yeah. uh, when, when I was out in Colorado or whatever. Yeah. I feel you. It's tough to kind of pull trigger on certain things, especially when it's like having multiple ideas is tough to balance because you don't know which one you want to start with first. That yeah. might be important. But Okay, so professional snowboard for how long? When do you consider yourself going pro? I was like... Maybe like 16. 16 years old. Yeah. Damn, that's a long time. Yeah. It's fucking tight. Really long. That is really my body, long. My body will tell you the same thing. Yeah? <laughs> my body's always jacked. I feel like you would never know. Like, I mean, if you stay, you're still riding hard as fuck right now. So yeah. 
after injuries and all that shit. I mean, that's so many years in the game. The shit's got to really fuck you up. Yeah, that's why. But I'd rather be like all jacked up as an old guy than to like have not really done anything in life and be like completely perfect at 70. I'd rather like have a cool limp or something. Or just like a dope ass wheelchair. Yeah, some spinners on it. I'm with that. I, uh, I, I, so I found out about you. Let's see. When did I find out about you? Through, um, what's that underwear company called? Ethica. Ethica, I think. No, yeah, Ethica and from Yeah Nice. Yeah. Were you spon- Did they sponsor you or whatever you call no, it? No, I, I grew up with those those guys. Like JJ's obviously older, but yeah, his partner I knew really well too. And then JJ coached me for a while. Like when you, Ethica acquired Yeah Nice and then. Oh, I didn't even know they acquired them. Yeah, and then it kind of was like fizzled yeah. to whatever it is. I mean, Ethico was growing so fast, it kind of like all hands on deck. Yeah, right, makes sense. So I was when I was back in my rap days, you know, out there that. spitting bars and shit. Uh, yeah, and I sponsored us, yeah. which I was just thinking about this the other day because it was funny because I remember um, what the fuck is his name? What was his par- what was JJ's partner? Josh. Josh. Damn, Sherman. 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 My bad, bro. Um, Josh would like, yeah, we're gonna sponsor you, and I'm like, oh fuck, this is crazy. Like, we're making it, bro. We're getting a fucking sponsor. This is nuts. And he's like, just tell me what you guys want. And I remember me, my other rap partner in crime, and my DJ were like, damn, what should we get? And I was like, hey, everyone, go to the website, tell me what you want. And I sent him like a fucking PDF with like a hundred links. Like, I'll take this and small, this one, this one, this one. We literally like wanted all of his shit, and he's like, probably like, damn, that's like ten for me to <laughs> give you all he's like yo i can't yeah, maybe like yeah. a couple of these things yeah. like what do you want i'm like damn anyway met, i remember seeing you from their shit and being like okay this is cool like they're connected to him he's really fire at snowboarding yeah. and all this shit and i'm like uh, coming up and snowboarding and i fucking thrived off that shit so i was watching all your shit and then i run into you you mad years yeah. later when i'm on tour yeah. with you do you remember where was we were that? At? Was that Lala or was that uh, ACL or ACL? ACL. That's the I Texas did, one. I did, yeah, because I did. I did. I was at Bonnaroo, Lala, and ACL. So I can't always get confused on. What which were you one there for? At. Just as a I was fan? Doing, no, I was doing. <laughs> no, you just pulling up. No, I was doing stuff for Rebel TV. For, oh, like the social stuff for Rebel TV because they had the live stream and all, and all that. That's why. Like after seeing, you know, when you see someone on Instagram and then sometimes they might not look the same or you might not recognize or you see them yeah. and you kind of, I'm like walking in the pit because Q is about to perform and I'm like walking down the pit and I come around and no one's in the pit. That's why yeah. I was like, how are you in the fucking pit if you were just there as a fan just yeah. kicking it? <laughs> Red Bull makes sense. But I'm like walking and I look up and you're just walking towards me and I'm like, I know this dude. <laughs> And you kind of looked at me yeah. the same too. And I was like, yo, but you didn't like follow me or nothing. I don't no. know how, maybe you just knew me from Q shit or I don't know what it was. I don't, I don't know. You I just remember, being I just friendly. Remember, it's like when you just like have that. Guy, like, yeah. You're like, yo. And I was like, what's up? And we like, dab yeah. each other. and for some reason it stopped yeah. to talk. And I was like, yo, I know you from this shit or whatever. Oh, cool. You're like, what are you, what are you, are you shooting for Q? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, I could figure you were like yeah. with the camera and shit. I'm like, we got to connect. And he's like, yeah. yeah. And we like swapped numbers and dipped. And I, I remember going backstage and like, dude, there's this pro snowboarder that I've known for a long fucking time that just was in the pit. And we swapped numbers and yeah. shit. He's tight as fuck. I'm yeah. like, I got to work with him on something. And they're like, oh, cool. <laughs> like, whoever is like, tight. Uh, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, tight, okay. And yeah, I was, because I went, I went on my own because I don't even think I was doing anything for, there's like a lit, uh, you know, you get a list of like who's Red Bull streaming and then, because there's certain like labels and stuff won't let Red Bull stream them. All and right. then there's like, I look at it and it's like, Okay, if I don't have to be at this person, I can. I want to really want to see this person play. I want to see, and obviously, I like I love school with Q, so I wanted to go see that. Yeah. So I was there on my own. That's tight. But like that was, you know, sometimes you just get the wristband and you just like talk your way. I just talk my way into stuff, which is crazy because yeah. I had all access, and those motherfuckers at that festival were the biggest hard asses. Like for where I could shoot yeah. in the pit where I saw you was a struggle. They'd be like, "You got to go." I'm like, "I'm his." photographer like leave me the fuck alone like i gotta work right now there's big ass dudes trying to pull me off the yeah. raft like off the, oh man that shit pissed me see, off see i think lala was the toughest one i feel like you can have every wristband but you still are missing the wristband that you need yeah coachella bro i'm sh- i've never been so beyonce's there's only so many camera operators and we all have a certain wristband and the yeah. dude wasn't letting me in and i'm like i am the start of this show you're not gonna let me over here you remember that dave Remember that fucking guy was like not letting me up to go shoot B? Like, I'm like, I'm, 
I need to be in this shit right now or I get fucked and you're for sure getting fucked if you're the one that stopped me doing this shit. And they're like, uh, uh, I'm like, I'm just going to walk. Just do whatever you need to do to me or whatever. I'm going to walk over there and dude, I hate that shit. Nope. But that's just the problem because these dudes work this shit for like, you know, 15 bucks an hour or whatever and they just need to get paid and they don't know the rules and, and then yeah. every festival is fucking ran differently. So anyway, <laughs> random tangents. Uh, met you there. Thought that was tight. Stay connected with you. Yeah. And then, uh, I don't know. We just watching you thrive off that shit was dope to me that I was like, Oh cool. I know that dude. You know what well, I mean? I was a member. I was a hit you out whenever you, I see something you post. I'm like, damn, that thing was sick. How do you do that? How do you do yeah, that? He's asking me how to do I like VFX questions. Bro, and I shit. still want, <laughs> I know I still want that one you did for Chris Brown. It, I showed so many people that I'm like, yo, this kid I know, check this thing out what he did. It's, that's not, you're not really scrolling right now. Right. That's the picture, yeah, the video. Yeah. <laughs> he, he saw Kavika, who is on the podcast. He'll probably be on it the week before you are. I just interviewed yeah. him. He's the one that like did the VFX to make it look like, basically it looked like if you're scrolling through Instagram, it looked like you were already scrolling and then it's a poster of Chris Brown's, the documentary we did and it, it just looked trippy as fuck. And I remember and you like, came at you yeah. and I was like, oh my gosh. He's like, dude, I need that shit. I'm over here just like, then I, I oh man, I'm doing this edit. Can you just put this this one word in here? I don't know how to make a title yeah, for it. Yeah, he's fucking trying to figure out how to add a title in iMovie. He's like, I made the video. Can you just add this logo for this brand on top? I'm like, dude, this will take two seconds. I, I hey, got man, you. Sorry to bother you if you're busy. Can you? That's probably what I said. And uh, But now I'm part of the group on Facebook, which is awesome yeah. because I like watch people be like, hey, this is my first time trying this effect. What do you guys think? It's tight, right? And, yeah. It's crazy. So I feel like I'm getting smarter just by reading. That's what I'm fucking saying, man. Black Widow Cream is powerful as fuck. It's That's cool. dope. I forgot I like, that you were in it. Yeah, I was talking to... Uh, Casey about it. Yep. And uh, my little homie Toby about it. Like, I, if anybody I know that's into like photography or filming, I'm like, you got to check out this group I'm a part of. Facts. Because then we get fucking powerful ass interviews like this and people can learn from people like you and it's dope. And then you're well, in the shit too already. I'm, I'm just like, it's it's cool to see like people that are all like-minded people, but they're all like helping each other and feeding off of each other and learning and growing. So that's what I like. I'm just like, I like just view it. Like, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Good. Dave's getting really well, getting really good at that <laughs> stuff right now. You just start to notice people's names and shit <laughs> yeah. on Facebook and they're like, but that's what's dope. It, to me, that's what's so dope is that you, my, like the people that are in the community, like yeah. the whole goal was that it was for me, people like me, before I turned, got into getting jobs and shit. Like back in Iowa, thriving yeah. to like become this artist that I wanted to be I wanted a space for creators like that so like how fucking tight is it to might not be as cool like you might not think of it that's cool but like to me I know that the kid that's sitting in Iowa that's in Black Widow Cream is having this shit watched by a fucking Olympian athlete yeah. you know what I mean like a, like a fucking pro snowboard like I would have fucking killed for that shit when I was a kid like I wanted to move to Colorado become a fucking filmmaker and snowboarding like that's what I wanted to do I was I wanted I that know, shit it sucks now you're just like doing stuff for Beyonce and like and if she starts snowboarding, I'm ready. <laughs> if she wants to go snowboarding, you know, hit me up. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can coach her. That'd be tight. Nah, but like, that's what's dope to me about the community. So I'm glad you're in that shit. No, that's yeah, pretty I, cool. I think it's, I mean, you said it was like an ex exclusive community. I was nervous I wasn't going to get in. No, nah, no. I got in. You're in for sure. Now I like to, like I said, like it's it's just cool for me to, to see so many people that are passionate about it, but like learning and then totally like putting out their work too. Like, like I said, like this is my first edit. This is my first time trying it. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, you got to kind of put your ego and your feelings to the side and just be like, there's so many people in here that are talented. Like, what do you think? Right, exactly. Give it to me straight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're going to get better. Yeah, that's dope. This is, this is a fucking great ass testimonial of <laughs> Black Widow Cream. I'm coming so from a person who doesn't even know how to put a title <laughs> yeah, in and edit. But. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, okay, so f sidebar before we get into the story. Toby is your homie that you were yeah, telling me about. He's like and, my little brother. Yeah, but he's like a fucking beast snowboarder, but he's also like killing it with the camera, right? Yeah, he's like, I mean, he's so, he got, he like bought a used like a uh, digital camera, like a, you know, like, well, I don't know what kind of was, like a Luminex <laughs> one or something, right, right. whatever. Isn't that how you say it, Luminex? Probably, I don't fuck with him. But you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyways, like he just bought, and then he was like, then he was doing this. Then he literally flew back, we were in New Zealand, he flew back to get uh, one of the big the Ronin. Yeah, like yeah. Ronin. He bought one on like eBay or something for like a G-Bone. He like, yeah. flew back. He had some other stuff he had to do, but pretty much it was just to go pick this up and then flew back to New Zealand again with Jesus this Christ. giant thing. He like come to New Zealand with like a drone and all this. I'm like, bro, you don't even film. Like yeah, you're here you're to snowboard. Snowboarding. But he's like, yeah, but this thing is so sick. Dude, check this out. <laughs> and it's like, so it's cool though because he always was down to shoot stuff and he's like, he's constantly learning like, oh, I don't have uh 
Adobe Photoshop, so I use this, and then I can get these plugins for it, and it does the same thing, and he's like all into it. Yeah, he's, he's all about that. He's like shit. a little youngin, so but he still cool. competes right now, right? Yeah, he's sick. Yeah, and he's cr- he's crushing it. That's fucking yeah. tight. I want to get him on here because I feel like he, he his story is gonna be d- dope. Too. Yeah, he's just like he'll curious. nerd out. He'll like ask you a hundred questions and be so excited about it. So you should you should for sure any sick snowboarder. Yeah, that's tight. All right, so to win as many medals, where do you keep all your medals and shit? <sighs> Dude, trophy I, wall i lost one i've lost one x games medal i don't know where it went like i was snowboarding one time and i reached in my pocket and i, and I found it in my jacket <laughs> but i think i might have got rid of the jacket and the medal was in there because i don't know where it damn one is. so those are like in a safe and some trophies are like i have a lot in my guest room but my house is kind of like torn apart right now because i'm trying to grow up a bit and like remodel it, a little bit or yeah, just make it like more of an adult house because right. i'm getting older yeah and so i don't really know what to do with the trophies so they're mm. kind of just like in a corner right yeah. now man cave it bro i feel like a man cave is like the spot for trophies yeah but we like some of our trophies aren't that cool what do you mean like like the design one one year like a trophy was like an a, a spray painted army helmet <laughs> okay like one of them was like a snow gun nozzle like just like a yeah. big clump of me- is of heavy as hell. Then we have some cool ones. Like U.S. Open one had like a huge glass O that's like frosted glass, but it's like thick and girthy. That's <laughs> like, tight. Like dope. And then like I have some that are actual trophies, but like some of them aren't like yeah, just off the wall like. Design. Like I have a mammoth one that was cool, but it's like you know you see those people that do like the the bears that are like carved out of wood. Like it's a mini one of those, and he's got like a snowboard or whatever yeah. it's like kind of cool but it's not like i wish we had like traditional like gold, big silver, trophies gold, yeah, and like, all those big ass like a big one things yeah. like the fucking hockey shit whatever that thing's called where you yeah stanley cup stanley cup yeah, yeah. that'd be tight damn I, I mean i'll take one i got one trophy over here that's it i might have more <laughs> dude we gotta we well, might make you one just like for such a great friend just give me the bear one what with is the that snowboard. one from uh, that's a Telly Award for Mary J. Blige's documentary. Oh, cool. So I don't know, editing or something. I don't remember what it was for, but we got them. That's a cool one. That's cool. It, yeah, it's like old. that shit, I know what you're saying. Like that's like a traditional looking yeah. trophy. That's why I was like, that's dope. But when Kavika came in, the dude that you like for yeah. the VFX stuff, he walked in for the pot, the beginning of it. He just walks in and sets down two moon men that he got from his uh, winning MTV's music video awards for VFX. Oh. Two in one year. And you just brought them and set them on the table for the whole podcast. The, during the podcast, I'm just like holding this shit, like chilling. Uh, he's like, do you don't, you don't have one of these? Yeah. I have two. I know. Like, I'm, I'm like, I, now I need to fucking flex on music. Do they still do those though? Yeah, dude. For uh-huh. music videos and shit, it's crazy. Like, well, I didn't even know I MTV played music videos. Uh, I think they just host award shows. Where do mo- most, would you say like more, what do you think gets more views for music videos? Uh, Vivo or YouTube? Is that what it's called? Vivo? Vivo? Vimeo? No, I thought there was like Vivo. A, oh, oh, Vivo, Vivo, yeah. yeah, yeah. But that's like a that's like part of. I think they oh. just now merged everything. Mm. All artists, I think, have their d- different channels that like maybe Q has the Schoolboy Q channel that yeah, he started, okay, okay. and then there's a Vivo Schoolboy Q channel. But I think they have merged all of it, so it all plays in like one space. I don't know. But so, what do you? How do you decide if you're going Vimeo or YouTube? Vimeo was. Sub- Back in the day, Vimeo was cool because like you could post whatever you wanted on there, but it was like the quality. You're supposed to get a better quality yeah. image on Vimeo than you would on YouTube because YouTube's like compressed and like whatever. But now I think it's the same, and both of them have fucking hard ass like copyright issues, so people can't like upload shit without getting flagged. I've heard and- people that have copyright issues; they don't just like make them take it down; like they delete their whole account. If you, it's like if. You- if you have so many strikes, I think like uh, you get like a three strikes on your account and then you're done and like, yeah, they'll fuck you up on that shit. But it's stupid. Like I had my homie Andrew Sandler on here who directed like Chris Brown's documentary yeah. and shit. So I worked with him on everything and we would like play in the podcast. Like if we were talking right now and he was talking about something we'd play like with the video he was talking about, yeah. it'd be a music video with no music and somehow the image is copyrighted and they would like, fl- they took the video down. So we couldn't even, just because we would play stuff that he directed it, but it, since we didn't get approval from the label, it got ripped down. So it's like, fuck, how are you supposed to like reference shit? But see, I feel like it in some sense, I understand in some sense, it's like you're giving them exposure. That's yeah. the way I look at it. Unless you're like, you know, t- talking shit about it or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, I get it. But like still. But even then there's. It's just getting, it's so automated. So it's all bots. And yeah. that's crazy that they can like literally be like, oh, this is a Chris Brown video that you're talking about. I've nope. actually lucked out on a lot of my stuff, but I've also tried to just do songs with artists that I know. Yeah. I'm like, the, 
They'll give you. If they get mad at me, they'll hit me up. On yeah, the text, right. Be like, yo, Louis, that's why. Yeah, don't do but that. sometimes it's not even up to them. Yeah, it's, I know. That's it's just the bots. It's like, yeah. On Instagram, it's like, hey, this is someone else's song. Like, Dave was having a problem with it with J Balvin shit. He shot all the behind the scenes. Yeah. They gave him the music, and then he tries to post it. Hey guys, check this out. I just did J Balvin's video or whatever, and it, it wouldn't let him. <laughs> So you can't even flex that he did the job because of that shit. It's fucked up. They're like, yeah, right. Prove it. Yeah. Like, what do you mean, prove it? Like, fuck you. Um, I hit the label up and asked them to whitelist it for me. They're like, no, we can't do, we can't do that. But here's some, like, here's some Instagram clips you can post. And, like, the Instagram clips were like, yeah, okay. <laughs> he said they hit the label and they whitelisted it, tried to get him whitelisted, but they couldn't do it for his account. So they just sent him, like, other videos. And he's like, no, I want to post, <laughs> post my video. Like, what do you mean? Like, here's some of the music video. No, man. People don't get it. Anyway, how the fuck do we get over here? My fault. I don't remember. But I can talk about anything. So I know so, you can. So I don't really, you don't have to apologize to me. Apologize for these people. Yeah, sorry guys listening. I'm, I'm too off the wall. You just mentioned that you I wish. Dave's talking now. And, and our there, goal is to set up a mic for Dave. And so I'm sorry that you guys can't hear Dave. There was a story you said before we get into the story, but I didn't know what story oh, you were going to no, get yeah, into. For, no, what, what I was going to say, sorry, the story, I want to talk about your story. Like your oh, life story. Oh, my story. Yeah, okay. yeah my but, life story. But what I was going to say is like, <clears throat> you competed in, the Olympics? Yeah. What'd you win there? <laughs> I won fifth place. Fifth place? Yeah, I should have been better, but whatever. Really? That's my personal opinion. I feel like fifth place it's in subjective. the Olympics is pretty yeah. wild. But whatever. But yeah, you definitely could have done better, bro. Um, <laughs> you, you got fifth place in the Olympics. <clears throat> Dope. And then yeah. all these awards. Yeah. Like, did you ever imagine that when you first started getting into snowboarding that you would that that would become your life like trying to get awards and win contests and like competing at that level like when you started was it for fun just to do it or was it like man like i want to get good at this and do you know park or whatever it was you know what i mean <laughs> uh well i grew up in ohio so midwest um, yeah. and we you know like my grandpa had us all skiing because we live by like a small resort like 300 vertical feet 10 seconds down Whoa. yeah we have one of those yeah so you know exactly what i'm mm -hmm. saying and so he thought it'd be great for like family activity, go ski, whatever. Then my dad and I saw snowboarding like, oh, this looks pretty cool. Let's try it. Right. Started snowboarding. I just remember like we were literally we were just like ride down, fall, ride down, fall. Oh, this is awesome. Like, <laughs> wait up. I'm coming down. You know, like just whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so then we kind of got more and more into it. And like, it's crazy because I always say like my dad had a passion for snowboarding before I knew what even having a passion for anything was. I didn't know what a passion was. I just knew I liked to snowboard. He loved snowboarding. So we were like travel like all over the Midwest. But I also did uh, gymnastics and I did like ODP soccer stuff, like Olympic development soccer stuff. But like with gymnastics, all that competition is in the winter and I was getting more and more into snowboarding. Oh, so right. like we'd be like in Chicago for a gymnastics thing. My dad would drive through the night to like Western PA to like Seven Springs, which was like this dope resort, still is a dope resort, but they had like a half pipe there and a jump and like a true rope toe. And he'd drive through the night. I just sleep in the car. Bam, yeah. wake up. Yo, let's go. My dad's like, oh, yeah, yeah I'll, follow I'll follow you. I'll follow you. I've been driving <laughs> yeah. all night. Like, so we were just, but he loved to snowboard. So we would just ride all the time. And he was always down. And like in Ohio, we had night skiing so I could go after school right. and stuff like that. So it just kind of like kept going. And then I met this coach in Seven Springs in Western PA, or he owned a shop, but he like coached his son. Like I was always, you know, the youngest. And then he went to a, a snowboard boarding school to coach called Stratton Mountain School in Vermont. And they tried to get me to go in like sixth grade. My mom and dad said, hell no. Seventh grade, I don't think he's mature enough. Eighth grade, boom. Okay, I went in the winter of eighth grade. So I, I, I made a deal with my mom because my mom didn't want me to sacrifice my education. Right. And my dad just said, as long as I'm a good kid, it's good, whatever. Right. And so I ended up making a deal with my mom that I would take Latin. <laughs> so... <laughs> I got tutored in Latin in Ohio for the fall and the spring. And I'm talking like old school Latin teacher. So we get out of school. Everyone's like, yeah, out of school. I'm going to go to Johnny's house, whatever. I had to go to Latin and get tutored. And this dude would like grab your face. Like, cause I have really bad ADHD. So like make <laughs> me focus, like by like physically grabbing yeah, my yeah, face. Yeah. And then I transferred out of my school, went into Stratton at like 13 and then transferred back out of there, back into Ohio for the spring. But that was like the first time I got to snowboard every day in the winter. The seasons were way longer. Um, I got to be with like kids that all snowboarded my age. Because right? everyone at the school yeah, was, was doing that? Yeah, was either a ski racer, snowboarder, or a cross-country skier. Got it. And I lived in a dorm. Yeah. So I had like a roommate, everything. And I mean, dude, before That's I tight. went, I learned how to do like laundry. Like, Yeah. I was like, it was college pretty much, and I was 13. And then uh, that was a, 
in 2002 because the Olympics, first time someone was in the Olympics was 98. I went to the 2002 Olympics with a friend of mine I was going to school with whose parents were pretty well off. Flew my dad, me, a teacher, what? everything, buddy out. And so we saw the half pipe. We swept half pipe. Ross Powers won. Danny Cass second. JJ Thomas third. Yeah. And That's crazy. Ross, Ross went to my school. He graduated from my school. The guy who coached him his whole life was the head coach at my school. And that's when it was like, damn, like I'm on the right path. Yeah. So I got third place at nationals in my age group that the year before I went to boarding school, which was huge coming from Ohio, no half pipe, nothing. Then my at eighth grade, my first year at the boarding school, I won nationals in my age group, and then this so was like half every pipe. yeah. For so those like everything was kind of like okay, I just won nationals, or no, I went to the Olympics, watched that. The guy who won went to my school. He graduated. He had the same coach. I went to nationals. I won. Oh my gosh! Like this is actually something I could do because of, before you know, I just loved to snowboard. Like Ohio is Ohio. Like you know, people don't understand, right? So, but you you won national. It was for strictly for half pipe. pipe. So there's like, how the fuck do you come in and win if you can't? Well, I got train. third to one before that, and it's just <laughs> just like Vermont. Like was like actually. Oh wait, half this pipe. happens in Vermont that you when got I these, won. Yeah, right. I got third in Ohio when I wasn't when I was still living in Ohio. But a crazy thing when I was in Ohio, man, our season would end like early March. Nationals wasn't until like mid April. Right. So like these kids from Tahoe like came fresh off the mountain to the wherever Nationals was. I've been like chilling, skateboarding, chilling, yeah, like, like, like hanging out, like yeah. playing soccer at this yeah. point. It's like not winter in Ohio anymore. Damn, but uh, that's crazy. So then, and then, like all through high school, I went full time. So I played, so- I played soccer there in, in the fall. Like fall, it's normal, but in the winter time, we go to we snowboard in the morning, and then we go to school from like noon to five fifteen. Hmm. And then my parents' big thing was like, my dad would be like, you know if you pretty much if you mess up i'll make you the best snowboarder in ohio like i'll pull you out of this school so fast i don't even care like snowboarding is great but it's all about being a good person my mom was about caring about that and then my education because it was like college prep school like right, right. kids from my school go to dartmouth and Damn. brown and middlebury whatever all those schools so it was like really good education for me which I, was good and i stayed out of trouble which was good i probably would have gotten more trouble if i stayed at home yeah and i got to snowboard all the time and then as soon as i graduated i Moved to Utah. Graduated o- high school. O six, which is so you go you go to that school all like all through high school. Damn, is yeah. it junior high there? Or no, uh, there's you, a, I went, went I went winter of eighth grade. Winter of eighth grade. That's and when then you I moved. went all through high school. But there's like some kids that are younger, like because you have some day students that might go there. They yeah. just get like more like tutored. Right. I was like full on in a class, but like my Latin class, I had one other kid. Like nobody wanted to take Latin. Yeah. That's so (laughs) random. My mom said it was good for my grammar and vocabulary. (laughs) Shout out to mom. So I'm supposed to use big words, I guess. Right. Right. That part. Um, is it, is it, I don't know, like getting put into training like that, is that difficult or or were you always kind of like motivated to work hard like that? Well, for me, it wasn't like, I got thrown. It was, for me, it was like I'm snowboarding every single day. Awesome. I'm snowboarding with kids that are good and are pushing me yeah. and love to do what I'm doing. So it's like, that's cool. So to me, it wasn't like, all it was, it was giving me an opportunity to snowboard and like have somebody help me like know what the hell I'm doing. Right. Like, I don't know. I was just chucking myself. Yeah. Oh, I try to do this, you know, and then you're so addicted. It's like, it's like if you were messing around with your with your camera for a while and then you go to a like a place with like five other dudes that are like your age your passions everything and then you had to go to class and like learn how to use a camera but like an action class where you're actually shooting stuff yeah. and not like a lecture you don't even think about it you're like yeah, this is awesome every day i'm learning something new that's crazy and so that was cool and like a lot of kids you know there's like we've had like i mean being an olympian they're like we got a bunch of olympians and across the board that went to my school and there's like some kids that I still snowboard with that I went to school with. So is Vermont just like a fire spot to ride? It was, you know, like cause now it's like it's you know, everything's kind of growing. But like I started out, I used to do everything: border cross, GS, slalom, everything. And then there's just more half pipe competitions. And mm-hmm. then it's like then I just started doing that more than slope style. And it came to a point then where it's like you don't see many people that compete in both. There is slope style, right. half pipe. I mean, you see people with slope style and big air because it's the same thing. More yeah. Or less. But yeah. So. Damn. That's crazy. So when you're going, you're when you ride, is yeah. it instructors that are teaching you stuff about riding, like or like was at it, school? Yeah, like at school. We had a coach, like the coach normally riding with you, 
And like, is that person also teaching you actual school shit? No, no, I teachers. Okay, like, right. Dorm so parent, like, dude. We had like dorm parents. Wow. Which would be like an RA in college. Yeah, we yeah. had those people. We had teachers. We had like one teacher. She was like the hard ass teacher. She, you called every teacher by their first name except for her. She was like the older lady. She could tell you you couldn't go on a trip. She would be like the person that was like ruled school. But she loved me because I had her as a Latin teacher. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of two people that took that class, yeah. got the perks. Yeah, dude. I mean, she loved me. Like, I tried to get out of her class my senior year because my friend, he was, we were both checking out of school for all winter and I didn't have it on my, on my um, schedule. I didn't have an English teacher. She's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, oh, I should probably be with Danny because, and he had like the, te- the cool chill teacher. You could like get him off subject, like. You know, like say something. Tell me about when you backpack through Thailand when you're yeah, like 20 yeah. years old. Like, oh, okay, and then yeah, you just miss. Yeah. And so, like, I was like, I should probably do that. Be with him. And she's like, eh, No, you're gonna be with me. And I'm like, Fuck. Damn, dude, because like she's strict. Like, like I could, Danny and I could hand in the same paper. He also handed in one of my papers before and gets a better grade than me. Right. It's just like this teacher yeah, was like yeah, real yeah. strict. Yeah, but she's like that teacher you have, and then when you're done with school, you're like. She was dope. Mm-hmm. She was dope. We hated her at the time. But. Did you feel like, like, okay, Vermont from Ohio, that's far as fuck. Like, you had the 14 hour drive. You would drive there? Or would you yeah. fly? I mean, I would, most of the time we'd drive. Drive, my right? My parents would drive up. Yeah, back. My, I have, my, my dad's from upstate New York, so we mm-hmm. had family in upstate. My aunt lived in Albany, which is where you would fly into most of the time, anyways, to go to the school. So oh, it word? didn't really matter. Is that close to Albany? Yeah, like an hour and a half. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So how often were your family, like, was, would your family come out and visit? Are you your only child? No, I got an older sister. Older sister. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, so how often would your family come out to see you? Or would you just come mm, home? It depends. Like, maybe if there's, like, a competition. Or they, they, then my parents work. They still work. They work, like, seven days a week. They, right. They just never stop. Yeah. My dad, like, turned, when he turned, like, 61 or 62, like, he had two radio stations. He, like, started two more. Wow. Like, okay, we... You're 60. Yeah. It's like, but he's that person. He'll work yeah. forever. I don't, right, I don't right. see him retiring. He comes to my house to like, now he comes to my house like, just need to get out of Ohio. And my, I wake up, he'd be like on the deck drinking McDonald's coffee, <laughs> like on the phone because it's two hour difference. Yeah. And, you know, he'll be up at 5 a.m. Right. He can't sleep. Yeah. So. Damn. So was it like, were they, I mean, could they see that the school was working? For you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right and like, but it's funny because everything, like, everything in my life is like, okay, when I go to the school, like, we'll see if Louis really likes snowboarding, snowboarding every day. He's never snowboarded every day. He's never snowboarded for this long. Okay, he loves that. Right. Boom, break my leg. Uh, 14, 15, 14 or 15, whatever. Okay, we'll see if Louis still likes it. There's a major injury. Broke his femur in half. Let's see if, if he loves it. God damn, doing Boom. what? Snowboarding? Yeah, they snapped it in half. Bop! Right in half. I told the guy. I said, I broke my leg. I said, told my parents back home, ah, he thinks he broke his femur. He, uh, he, it's, it's not. He didn't break his femur. He would be screaming. Get the x-ray. I'm like, so is it broken? And the lady laughed at me. She's like, huh. Ah. It was like, damn. Broken in display. But I got really thick tree trunk legs, so... If I had like normal sized legs, they would have popped through. Fuck. I got like real, my legs are like, it's hard to fit in pants. So, damn. Thunder thighs. It pretty much, bro. <laughs> like, I tell people, like, my waist is like a 28. I got to wear a 30 just to get it around my butt. Right. And my legs. <laughs> did the, did no the, slim fit for me. So, what? That did, but that didn't phase you. Like, no, nah, I was just like, so then I was went home for a little bit, right? After surgery, because I, I did like, I was doing rehab with a therapist, like, four times a week three times a week and like with my mom was helping me like four times a day Yeah, because I was young, you know, and I was just like, you know, getting, I was like snowboarding again in maybe three and a half months. I was like, I was making turns. Wow. It's it's normally six to nine recovery, but I was young. I went to like the best surgeons, Stedman Hawkins and Vail. Yeah. My dad, my dude, Dr. Viola. Then he, he did my wrist the next year because I broke my wrist and I just kept re, I I didn't get it casted right away. And then I got it, I kept re-breaking it, re-breaking it. And I wore away three millimeters of that bone. So we did a two for one deal. And Dr. Viola is like the best hand doctor in the world. Right. So he did two for one deal. A bone graft (laughs) out of my wrist, screw (laughs) bone out of my hip, screwed into my wrist. And then he took the rod and four screws out of my leg. And that he, he filmed it. I had a video of him like hammering out the rod out of my leg. Oh my god! And they're like chilling, dude. They're like, 
what are we listening to? Ah, it's nothing like it's a little Ted Nugent while taking large pieces of metal out of people. Jesus. And he's like, and they're like pulling the lady, the nurse, like filming, and he's like pulling the rod out. It's like the side of my butt. He's like, it's a boy. I'm like, you were like, what they're doing is like gnarly. They're like my leg is just like a hunk of meat, like hammering in the screwdriver, yeah. and like undoing. It's like literally like a screw, like unscrewing yeah, it, right. and like pop it out. <sighs> but yeah, so I've had a few of those. Yeah, I would. How many bones have you broken? Do you think in in the career? I mean, it's funny because like I'll hear, like I've had X-rays or MRIs on my ankle. Cause, oh, my, my ankle's really jacked. I gotta get an MRI, and they're like, "Oh, you have an old bone chip." You know, yeah. Right, like I got like old compression one up high. I broke my back, twenty eighteen and twenty yeah twenty eighteen season. I broke my back. Had a, the discs are the worst. I've had discs. I probably broke like I've been pretty healthy, like five or six bones, four or five bones. You broke your back. Yeah, that sucked. Back, but the disc, I had, like, all disc issues. That was the most pain. Like, yeah. Pain I can deal with. Uh-huh. But the disc, like, make it so you can't, like, bend over. Like, I can't, like, hard to put my sock on. I'm like, right. Ah. Fuck. Trying to, like, snowboard still. Like, I, I'm, I snowboard, I slammed, broke my back, did my second run, <laughs> slammed again. I did, like, I just kept riding, which probably is not the smartest, but, like, I When bro- you broke it with a yeah, broken back? Yeah, but, like, I literally that's what makes me laugh about mainstream sports like people are like oh I got a sprained finger on my non-shooting hand I'm like you're soft as hell yeah right but I'm also not getting paid 33 million dollars yeah, yeah I'd probably be sitting on a bench with a pina colada like yeah. with a sprained finger yeah but like yeah I've ridden <clears throat> I mean I rode with my wrist broken like not even casted I finished that contest went to another contest went home for Christmas my mom made me get it cast because I could have barely even hold anything in that hand it just hurt so yeah. I got that casted War kept re-breaking that one I mean, like, it's like a normal thing. If I, if it's pain, I can deal with pain. If right. it's not going to get worse, I say to the doctor, is it going to get worse if I ride? No. It'll just be painful. Cool. I'm good. Yeah, right. That's crazy. That's why I look at it. Where do you think that comes from? Being able to, like, literally be like, Suck I, it I, I, no, but where's the passion come from? Oh, I think you just get, like, I mean, I'd be like with anything I love, like, soccer, I'd do it. Like, I was like that kid that if the goalie didn't have possession of the ball, like, I'm coming in hot. Right. Like, but I always want to be the best. I'm like too competitive. Everything I do, I want to be the best. like my dad and I. We can't play like monop monopoly together. Yeah. Like we'll be fighting. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. Like <laughs> my friends that I get along with are the best, or the ones that like understand. Like they're not competitive, so they're like cool. Then my friends that are really competitive, it's like we got to be on the same team in anything. We yeah. Do otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll end that friendship. It'll be bad. Yeah. Right. So I have like one friend that's like that. So when we play like sports, like, like we're on a team. <laughs> oh, we're not playing because it, it's not even like we're stacking the cards. It's like we still want to be friends. Right. But I'll go at you. Like I don't, but I would do that with anything. Like if you're like, Louie, you're going to play, play Pete Sampras in tennis. Like I, I suck at tennis. I, I, I would still try 110% because I throw left-handed and I bat right-handed. So when I play tennis, I just have forehands. Oh, I don't yeah, have right. a backhand. I switch hands. Huh. But I'll still try to win. I know yeah, it's yeah, impossible, yeah. but I'm going to try. Damn. Just how I am. In yeah, anything. right. Just gives you that energy. Yeah. When you when you got into like competing, I mean, you were competing before you even moved in when started going yeah. to school. But was it just because you saw comp? Like, why did you compete? I don't know. I think it was like a some like more something of an do? organized way to do it. Like a contest. It's like you don't. I don't know. It's like going playing soccer or baseball and then playing in a game right. like it's way more fun in the game like the fields are going to be taken care of and yeah. there's like a way to judge something there's a winner and a loser right like, so i just like to do it so what, what was like the first true big competition that you did uh i mean it depends like relative it's like when i was younger like doing nationals was the biggest thing for me okay. then it was like i want the first pro contest i won was australian open and like it's funny because when people like <laughs> like look up stuff, they're like, "Oh, I've got to research Louis Vito for this interview or whatever." They're like, "You did the you're the first one to do a backside 1080." And it's like, "Yeah, but like it's funny to watch the video." But Australian Open was my biggest contest, like the first one I won. And I think once you like crack that seal, then it like started going for me. And I was like, that was like a good event. That was like 20 racks, I think, is what I won. So win? I was like stoked. Damn, first one, like, that's fucking Danny tight. Cash was there. That's like my like a mentor and a big brother. I think he was the one who was at. And I beat him, which was like, this is like heaven. Dude. That's crazy. This is my boy. Yeah. And I was like. Just whooped him. Yeah. And it's like, it's just cool. I mean, it's not even like I was on like, hell yeah, I'm better than you. It was just like, dude, this Danny Cash is like my idol. And I beat him and he's stoked. I won a nice check. I was like, woo. Dude, and Dan Cass is such a fucking goat. Like, Oh, he is. Who, me, he's like my favorite. Like, 
he's like my favorite snowboarder ever. He's so good. Ever. Like, I love, like, Mark Frank Montoya's style. I love Mark Frank. That's my boy, too. But, like, Danny Cass is insane. Yeah. Every it, part that I would ever watch him in, I'd be yeah. like, fuck. But he's, like, such a so creative in his mind like all the grenade movies like had the skits everything fit and was themed uh, what he and his brother did with grenade like bro they're like the biggest company before they made anything that's crazy like, they didn't even make and sell gloves and like i remember they had the they had the grenade logo i was working at wendell snowboard camp then i was charging kids 20 bucks to spray paint a stencil that i had made of the grenade logo Onto fake lo- <laughs> anything onto their boards because but that's what Grenade did like yeah. right it was all the guerrilla marketing yeah. they did so they had stencils so but twenty bucks just like hey I'll 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 spray paint this stencil on your board for twenty bucks yeah here you go boom twenty bucks then I got it. Uh, <laughs> this is a stencil a that's all it is is a yeah. stencil damn I did that every you know every week you have dude I love my grenade in. when I got my grenade gloves I thought I was like the coolest kid on the fucking yeah. mountain I thought that shit was so tight yeah grenade brand was, was nuts dope. yeah and. It was like even like the stuff that they came up with, like it, the graphics, the logo, uh-huh. like everything. I always thought it was funny because the grenade logo was like the most valuable part of the company, mm. and it was just like a, the way they did it. Like they had like the the grenade logo that was actually like a hand, the bone of yeah. hands, hand grenade. Like, yeah, that shit. Looks I'm, I'm like sick. the doctor, like, oh, it's all these like, oh, it's like a hand. It's like that's a great thing. I get a shirt of that because it was like a the, some, the skeleton of a hand. And he's, yeah, he's all into that. With. I was like, hand grenade. He yeah. like, I remember Danny had one sketch in like his notebook and I was like, a bowl of pasta and I was like, the grenade was like uh, looking like a meatball grenade. Like, yeah. It was just like so cool. Damn. He's such a good snowboarder. When you, when you compete, is it like, I don't know. Do you do you get bad blood with other snowboarders? Is there a, does competition like for you? You just said you you have to play with your homies on the same team. Yeah, and then your homies are probably the people you compete with, a majority of them. Yeah, but I mean, like, I think it's true because it's not like head on like head to head, right? Like basketball, like so you're getting aggressive and you get a little more pushy and yeah. a little more pushy, and right. then you start throwing blows. Yeah, snowboarding wasn't like that. I mean, you have your snowboarders that you're like gosh i really hate when he wins like this sucks it's not really your homie though but, right yeah, yeah but for the most part it's just like it is what it is you know yeah and our sport's so hard because it's like subjective like some days they love you and some days they hate you we say sometimes you get the elevator sometimes you get the shaft mm. you might not like you could put down a hammer judges weren't feeling it the next week you put down the same run and you win they're like what like, I yeah that doesn't make sense. It. yeah it's all okay hmm, that's interesting so when did you start filming snowboarding a lot at a young age like were you like documenting what you were doing I was mean, there? like dad cam. Dad cam. I mean, style. at that time, dude, you gotta think that was a long time ago. So, like, they were like the bigger, like VHS ones. Like, yeah. like if I have like a sponsor me tape and stuff when I was really? a little kid, like, and it's all like, yeah, like dad cam stuff, like 1998, you know, like in the corner of the screen and stuff. Yeah. Did you get a? Did you ever get a sponsor from your your, your sponsor no, me tapes? Yeah. I mean, like when I was younger, a lot of it was just like hooking you up with boards and stuff. Yeah. Or, like you know, like little things, but like you know, you give them like your resume and you have like this many contests I won. Right. Like, but I like, I was on Sims when I was really young and it was cool because of the guy who put me on Sims because I was like an am and I wasn't really like, I got boards and stuff, right? Sims but, a video game? No, Sims like <laughs> snowboard company. Oh, I was like, like, what the hell? It's like one of OG <laughs> snowboard companies and uh, the, the team manager at the time, like he would like check on like my grades in school. Wow. Like, well, my parents were like, that's cool. Yeah, that's dope. And then They like, care. Like yeah. they really care about their riders. And then you had like some team managers that were wild and I'm like, wow, I can't, like I tell somebody like, oh, I used to travel with this guy when I was like 14, 15. They're like, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, trust me. I turned out pretty good though. Yeah, right. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. What a risk, man. <laughs> that, that I feel like for me, this is so fun for me to do this interview because like I grow, I, I, like I was riding my snowboard in Iowa. You had to drive two hours to get to the park, right? Yeah. And it was the same thing, 300 like feet. Like it was yeah. nothing. It was like a couple rails, one jump, half pipe. Sometimes they didn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they could, but they didn't. <laughs> and then, uh, but we ride all the time. Like me and my, I have like my friends, we play paintball in the summer, snowboard yeah. in the winter, skateboard. And then I was just, I couldn't get better at skateboarding. I got, I could get good at snowboarding. I was yeah. like, all right, I'm pretty decent at this yeah. shit. And then, um, I went, I remember I did one competition and I won a Burton board. And That's I was sick, like, though. I know, I know. I was like, this is tight. I sold it to my, my brother's uh, friend like not too long ago because I just had it in the basement. I never wrote yeah. it. And and I have a forum 
uh, they don't even, does Forum a company anymore? No. RIP. But I, know, I was on Forum for a while. Dude, so. that that was like my favorite. I was like, this shit is so dope. That, but it just broke. Like, all it's so fucked from Rails yeah. and shit. And I'm like, pretty bummed I don't have that board anymore, that burden, because I, now I have to buy another one. I know. Shit. But anyway, I love, like, coming up, like, that's all I cared about. I would, every Trans World Snowboard Magazine I had that shit, I was just like, yeah. Is it a, this done? <laughs> yeah. Fuck. <laughs> too expensive no, no more trans world damn skateboarding or snow but trans world as a whole like the entire thing's gone <laughs> if you <laughs> ah, what if you had a trans world subscription they ended it they were like hey trans world's done and you have some more issues left we're gonna give you <laughs> men's journal men's journal what the fuck <laughs> bro think about the people that in, that subscribe to trans world like Getting the that? men's journal. Yeah, what the hell? What, like, a, what is this? Yeah, what is I that? I learn about like dress shirts. <laughs> <laughs> How do I cancel this shit? The phone yeah. doesn't work. They canned it. What? Yeah. Damn, that's crazy. I well, didn't... it's funny because the parent company that owns Transworld owns Snowboarder too, but it kept Snowboarder, and not Transworld. Huh. I don't know how that worked, but I, some people thought that they were going to still run an Instagram or something. That's because like crazy. a site, you know, like you get like a little content across. I didn't follow them, but you get content from across the board, right? Rather than like following <clears> like <throat> a certain snowboarder or a certain snowboard company. Yeah, too much stuff. So I don't know. Wow, that's yeah. crazy, man! I fucking looked up that JP Walker. That's my boy. Really? Yeah, that was I like him when I was a little kid. He was so nice to me. Him and Jeremy Jones, right? Jeremy Jones, fuck both of them. They, I met them at early ages. Like JP, like I met super young. And Jeremy, I was in an alphanumeric ad when I was super young. The fuck is that? Alphanumeric was a clothing company you used okay. to ride for. Bro, they both were so nice to me as like a little kid, like kooky little kid. Like I remember like JP, like JP just posted a photo of me and him. I, I can show it to you. It's, it's crazy. Like when he used to wear the build brim beanies, like right, he... The yeah. beanies, he gave me one I like lost it I'm like crying I'm like 8 years old or 10 years old or something he's like gave me another one like so cool and calm <clears throat> Jeremy like I remember we used to go to Wendell's snowboard camp my dad and I both and you could do the coaches sale I could buy a pair of goggles 20 bucks I'm not my dad's not buying me goggles like my right. I had a pair of Oakley's and they're like the worst ones that were probably like $30 yeah. on sale clear yeah, lens yeah. You can't even take the lens out yeah. kind of thing so I used to buy all my stuff there. And so I did this out. This guy say, hey, you want to do this alphanumeric shoot with Jeremy Jones? I'm like, dad, can I? Yeah. Okay. So I'm standing there, big ass helmet on, holding these books. And Jeremy Jones is like nose pressing this rail and like popping out behind me. And like, oh, I'm just standing there, literally standing there. And so I said, hey, um, Jeremy, I was wondering, like Nixon was cool, right? My parents aren't going to buy me Nixon, a Nixon man. I say, do you have a Nixon watch I could buy? Yeah. Uh, buy and, from him? Yeah. Of course. Like coaches You're say. You're eighth grade? Like, are you eight, eight years old? I'm like ten, eight, ten years yeah. old. Like I'm a little kid. Yeah, can I buy that watch from you? Yeah, bro? and um, he was like, "I'll send you one." I'm like, "No, no, no, I'll buy it." Like my dad's like, "I'll buy it." You know, like thirty bucks probably is what we're thinking. Oh, yeah. and that's a big expensive watch for Those me. Those watches are fucking crazy. Yeah, bro. and so, bro, this fool sends me. He was on Smith at the time. Smith visors, Smith sunglasses, Smith goggles, a bunch of stickers, Nixon watch. Wow. Like, dude, kidding me, right? And didn't even know me. I just did the shoot with him. Some, I don't remember. He like I had his phone number, bro. I used to call him at his home, bro. Like, hey, Jeremy, what's up? Go to Park City on a Thanksgiving trip with my family. Jeremy and his wife drive from Park City or from Salt Lake up to Park City. This is when the Resistance was out. Comes gives me the copy of the Resistance, a foreign movie, best foreign movie they did, maybe True Life, but came signed it. Hung out with me during Thanksgiving. This guy drove. I'm. 10 years old, 11 years old. Wow. Like, they, so I, those, those are two snowboarders forever, unless they like really like talk mad crap on me. Like forever. <laughs> what would they I don't know. I'm just letting it out there. It's the only thing I guess. Cause like, I will never say one bad thing about them because those two guys set the bar for like me, like at X games or whatever I do, like spend time with the fans, sign stuff and be the last one out because of what those guys did to me. It's lasted with me this long. Like I've been there, I've been in the Olympics, whatever. But that will always stay with me. How nice, how genuine, how they treated me when I was like a nobody yeah. from Ohio, little kid. They didn't know that I would ever be. They didn't even, I mean, let's be honest, Jeremy Jones, I did an ad with him. I'm standing there. He never even seen me snowboard. Yeah. I didn't even know if I would, could snowboard. Yeah, I don't right. Know. Wow. But how the good f- they were to me was like, pfft. damn, that's, that's a record for like how everyone should be. Like, look at yeah. what that, that shit probably inspired you so much. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's probably like set the, the bar for me. And then it's like, 
and I remember like there was like a phase where like Jeremy was like hating on like certain things and snowboarding whatever and people were like getting all butthurt I'm like I got nothing bad Jeremy Jones is the man like, yeah forever grateful for him damn I remember watching um JPY I, I just loved his swag he always yeah. looked like, like tight and he'd be funny I remember there was like some part I can't remember what he did but he was like I can't even remember the words that he said it was like it's like basically the equivalent of like us saying so dude you know what I mean like that but he had like his own thing and my friends I think he did like a Cribs knockoff thing or some yeah. shit and then my friends did one in their dorm and like everyone wanted to be like him and I was just like man this dude's just fucking such a beast or whatever that shit was so tight fuck that's so crazy to think how old I am now <laughs> like think about how know, much, like that was, it was a whole different culture back then well, that I was like, like and now it's under a microscope like now it's like it's game di- way different like even when I was like younger like 18 it's different from like 18 to like between like even 18 to 21 it's changed 18 uh-huh. to 25 even bigger like yeah. 18 was a pretty like wild time but then like now it's just weird now it's like uh, I don't know, it's fun for you guys. Sucks to be you guys right now. It, yeah. was way, it was so fun. Like just like the things you could do, the money that was in the industry. To, I mean, forum was around. All these companies were around. Like it was wild times. Like grenade was around. That was cool. Um, Is grenade not a company anymore? Mm-mm. Fuck, dude, that's crazy. I know. How those gloves were like sixty bucks that I bought. I think like yeah, I think they had like some shipping issues and just like whatever. But it was that's I mean, yeah, it is true. It's crazy how much shit shifts. And because you got to think like right, like as you know from the Midwest, like especially in Ohio, like if Ohio orders something for like before Thanksgiving, like they need it for Thanksgiving or like for Christmas, if you miss that window, they're screwed. Yeah, super. Because fucked. our seasons are so short. Like yeah, like if you get it like a couple weeks later anywhere else, it's not a big deal. But like in Ohio, you miss that. Yeah, that's true. Done. And Amazon didn't exist back then. No, shipping wasn't what it was. And, and I honestly like the way the like talk, talk about this. Currently, the way the culture of consuming is with social media, ha, like we would wait for parts to come out. People would oh, film yeah. all season long for parts, and I know that still happens. But I feel like now you look at like like as soon as like I have you. I followed JJ. That was like my yeah. snowboarding consumption. Then you, then Gimbal guy, that dude's fucking yeah. freaky with the shit. So then I'm starting like, okay, this is next level watching the way he's capturing this shit. And then now my fucking whole feed is just snowboarding shit, which is dope, but there's so much. Yeah. And I'm like, who the fuck is this kid? This kid could just be rad and just good at filming like one trick, but yeah. I'm just like, he might be dope. You want to follow him. And then you get like all these like all stars on social. Well, I feel, uh, you know, back in the day is like Mac dog standard, absinthe all those there's like three big ones yeah. straight jacket films made some dope movies like there's like three four but i mean at to my eyes when i was growing up maybe i didn't know too like mac dog was like top tier now it's For like sure. there's so many like who are you filming with oh, i don't even know who's doing that <laughs> like, yeah it's just too many and then it's like you said like instagram changed it even the websites like trans or whatever some people would release just parts or the bts stuff or um a mini series like it was just anywhere anybody could do it you have a camera you can upload you can post it right and like it's just wild like it didn't like filming wasn't i don't think what it is like i i haven't watched this nowhere moving forever i watch one a year maybe it's just like can't keep up if i and, and then i want to skip i only want to watch the homies parts right but you can see so much stuff on instagram like that's kind of where it is so i don't know it's hard but do you, as as a snowboarder, how how much of your brand shifts to focusing on creating for social? Is, are you are you changing the way? I mean, I way? want to. Yeah, I just suck at it. I hate social media because I suck at it. Like everything, like Dancing with the Stars, pre Instagram, Twitter, brand new. Right. Olympics, no Instagram, Twitter was brand new. Right. So like, think about what if you if you had an IG when yeah. you did Dancing with the Stars. Oh man, I've been. But see, the funny thing is, that then like people that are doing Dancing with the Stars now didn't have the viewers that I had. Like we had twenty two right. million people a week on that show, and then Olympics was like the first time anything beat out American Idol when wow. I was half pipe snowboarding. You know, so like it would have been huge. So then I have such a weird group of people that follow me, and so it's like I don't know. Even, like one day I'm like, dog, this this clip looks dope. Like, nobody watches it. <laughs> yeah, because This it, photo's sick, dude. Nobody likes it. Yeah. I was talking to Casey McPerry about this. I said, dude, this photo right here, like, I love it. And I was like, crap. And he's like, yeah, I, you pretty much just post what you want. But, like, I mean, like, yeah, it's easy for you. You have all these, like, cool, like, layouts. Like, all your pictures, like, match. 
I'm like asking him about that. I'm like, man, I don't know. And then it's like, <laughs> you got to get a budget for somebody like, what's your, what's the guy's name? Who's, Kavika. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, bro, I can't even like I get one Instagram post from him and be like, <laughs> yeah, five grand. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. Dude. No, no, man. Hey, you wanna? You need to do some like pro bono work. <laughs> Let's go, bro. That's crazy. You know, that's what I'm but that's that's what's interesting. That's fucking actually mad interesting for you to. All right, so let's. You did Dancing with the Stars. Yeah, and that's actually insane to think about those numbers. Twenty two yeah. million a week. Watch that show. Fuck. Bro, and that was like what year was that? Two thousand nine. Nine. Fall of two thousand nine. Legend status. And it was like so. I mean. That's weird to think that there was no social media. Like, dude, that wasn't that long ago. If you look at the grand scheme of things, like, there was no social, like, Twitter. That was it. Yeah, but it wasn't even, like. I mean, like, Facebook. But, like, what I'm saying is, like, think about Instagram. Like, if, if, like, how many, like, you, would you even say one in ten people you know that don't have an Instagram? Right. Or one in 20? Yeah. Like, it's weird if someone says, I don't have an Instagram. Dog, like, like if you would have done Dancing with the Stars right now, my mom would follow you. You know, know what I mean, dude? Mom, follow me anyway. She, she listens to every episode. She can, yeah. Follow mom. You got that that fucking. She. I don't think she really follows more than she followed me, my sister, my brother, schoolboy Q, <laughs> and I, I think she unfollowed Q. So. Oh dang! Harsh. She didn't want that unfollow. You know, uh, it's funny because I was doing Dancing with the Stars. Um, I my one of my big brothers, Tall Cooperman, was good friends and had a company with Joel and Benji Madden. Mm. Good Charlotte. And we went over to their place one time, and their mom was in town. Their mom was mad hyped to meet me. Wow. And it was like, I'm like, oh, you're, <laughs> like, oh, you're good Charlotte. <laughs> Damn. And they were laughing, like, tall laughs so hard about yeah. it. Like, oh, I've met a celebrity. I'm like, look at your Joel and Benji Madden's mom. Like, they're so rad. Like, But that's when you came. So when you came over to chill with us at Breck. Yeah. Whatever. We all, we, you were there for like fucking three, four hours. We played a whole uh, fucking game of shit. You leave. Yeah. And then I go upstairs and the, like a bunch of my homies are sitting up on the table and some of them I didn't know. They're like, who was that? <laughs> I'm like, Louis, I, he had snowboards and shit. They're like, he's on Dance with the Stars? And I was like, yeah. Like, but that's fucking hilarious how this shit works. Cause it's like, uh, you think about how when people judge you on your fame, right? Or reach and people do brand yeah. deals and they're like, Oh, you have Ben, you have 60,000 followers. Like that's yeah. pretty good. I'm like, yeah, but there's mad people that know your shit or have seen, like, it's yeah. so weird how you reach people now. You know what I mean? Like not all of your fans follow you on Instagram. I know, that's which what is fucking I was going to say. I, it bothers me. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it goes back to us talking about net worth. Like they say, Oh, Google says your net worth yeah. is this much money, but it's like, but really it's way different than that. You know what I mean? Cause that's just yeah, what you know about. And it's, and I really, I was just saying this today too. I was like, I hate like Casey McPerry. I just use him because I was talking to him today. Follow Casey McPerry if you. He'll yeah, be on the I mean, podcast he's, he's got it. Motherfuckers, Samsung, whatever, Golden Child, Delta, Amex, and Delta, everything. Yeah. Like, but like I was saying to him because like he's somebody like even your stuff like right like I like your guys' stuff. Okay, I, granted, I don't want to have a post notifications on for every single person in the world. Right, but like. I was talking with Casey and I both saying about each other. I'm like, I feel like I haven't seen his stuff in so long on my Instagram and I'm not, I'm not scrolling through, but I scrolled through a bit Yeah. and I don't follow that many people, but it never shows up. I hate, just give me the it, yeah. chronological order. Right, man. Because I, because I'll go through and, and he was saying this about mine. Like, Oh man, I haven't seen any of these. I haven't seen any of these. And I'm like, that bothers me. Like when you follow each other, I follow people for a reason. Cause I want to see their stuff. Totally. So don't show me like, I'll see one of my friends. I'll have like three of his posts, and it'll be like in a like from in like one two sitting, three days, and it'll be like yeah, it'll be like from multiple days, and I'm like that's cool, but can I see what somebody posted yesterday, like an right. hour ago? Right. I just wanted to go back. They did it. They like for a little bit. They went back to it for a bit, and then they changed it again. They they keep this. I don't know, dude. That shit stresses me the fuck out because you got like like I, I hate also too like I follow like complex and shit. Right. Shout out to complex. They like my stuff. Uh. <laughs> They just liked a picture of me and my dad yesterday. That's dope. <laughs> like, I think the- it's because your dad was in it probably. Yeah, probably for sure. It made it like have way more value. And so they will like, I'll see shit that they post yeah. about like an event, whatever the Grammys. Yeah. I'll post it and I'm seeing it uh, way after. Like, You're like, I'm going to go to that dude. When is it? Oh, yeah, it's three days it ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like promoted. That's how fucked up the algorithm yeah. is. Like that, like I said that I, I want to invent an app. Please do it. Take my fucking idea from me if you want people. But my idea is this, create an app that you can log into your shit. Somehow it puts everything 
yeah. in order. Start. I rem- I love that. I remember I would scroll through Instagram and then I would see the old shit. Yeah. And I was like, oh cool, I'm done. I've seen it all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how it should be yeah. on every platform, but they fuck it up by doing all the shit. In but the algorithm, I feel like, is pointless. Like, use the algorithm for the explore page or whatever. It's, yeah, for the, the explore stupid page. thing is now. Like, I don't even know. I swear, it's like it's supposed to be based off of things that I like. Like my girlfriend golfs. I then I, f- I follow her and like I, now I follow some of her friends. But before, even when I was just like following her and like her friend when I met him, they both golf. Like my full. explore page was full of golfers. I'm like, okay, I understand. Like she golfs, and yeah. I understand. I see some golf. I don't. Want, I, and then it's like that and snowboarding. Like okay, snowboarding. I understand. I don't follow this many golfers to be blowing up my explore right. page. It doesn't. I don't understand how it's like. Eh, he likes golf. And the best was like. <laughs> Dude, I had so much six nine stuff up until like a year ago. I didn't even follow six nine. I follow Shoddy. Shoddy's my dude. Free Shoddy. I love Shoddy. But like everything, it's just full of that he was shit. like, it was like months after he's in jail. It was all my explore page it was like six nine golf snowboarding, and I only followed Shoddy. Shoddy's my only person. Doesn't make, dude, I don't know what the fuck's going on. But anyway, it is yeah. a new era that we that are in. Era. It's a fucking weird era. I just think it's. I I, I want to know like. Do our snowboarders like like specific, Gimbal God? I'll talk about him all day because that's really the yeah. only dude I'm watching that's like actually creating that I I don't know that I like enjoy watching or whatever. But yeah, is it something where people are like, oh yo, we got to go out here and get this shot tomorrow, and I'm gonna post it? Like I'm specifically going out for content, or are people still training for contests? And when they are, are they thinking like I need to be filming? And then uh, that also helps because think about how many people are in here that would love to create for. Yeah. Riders, like how do how do creators get involved with riders like you? you I, know s- I, mean? I think like so y- you have a little bit of both, right? Like I have friends, like honestly, so much footage that you see, like if it's a contest rider, so much footage that you see is either like GoPro or uh, iPhone, right? And it's like you're riding, like yo, will you shoot this real quick? Either that you want to shoot something for that day because they're done like working on some big stuff, and you're like, I just want to get a shot for today, photo, or like you literally just want to watch your clip to see right. what you're doing wrong. Um, so for me, it depends on the day. Like, right. I go to Japan. I'm like, uh, I'm not really training. I'm just going to go ride. I'm like trying to shoot stuff for Instagram. Like, let me get some shots. Cause I'm not filming for anybody. I just want it for my social. Right. Some days when I'm like training at like half pipe, like we'll be chucking and it might be something that your coach films or whatever. And you're like, Oh, that came out pretty cool. Or you're like, yo, can you do this? I just want to get this one big trick real quick. And, can you shoot a photo of it? I probably did more iPhone photo. I have so many iPhone photos, like action photos. Wow! In my stuff, that's crazy. Um, back versus back in the day when it was like legitimate photo shoots, setting up yeah, and trying to like and and filming back in the day though was like a so much like sixteen mil. Mm-hmm. And that shit's expensive. Super expensive. I have no idea how. That, I mean, I mean that's what all and there's no sound, so it's like that's what so many snowboard films are like sixteen mil. But like I think then you have some f- people who like. Stale has Gimbal God a lot for like his his social. I feel like Stale does mostly social because he's still a contest. Then you have some filmers who like who are filming for snowboard movies. They might just take their B roll stuff and post it on social because they're gonna come out with a video part. Right. But like, I think it's cool because like if unless you have a budget from your sponsors that you worked into your contract, like Danny Davis has a budget from his sponsors to have a filmer with him. Oh wow! It's like. I could be paying you out of my pocket, but it's like, let's do something together. That's cool. Yeah. So I like looked at, like I try to do stuff with people. Like if they're like, depending on who it is, like I had a, a buddy of mine made, I met him through this, but he did like one of Mike Posner's music videos. So we were always trying to shoot, shoot around ideas forever. He liked cooler than me video. And I think that's like a super sick video. Super tight video. Got a cameo in it. Are you in it? Yeah, dude. Really? Yeah, I'm sure it off. You in think it too. you're cooler than me? Yeah. With, Le- with Wayne, right? Dingo's in it too. What the fuck? Dingo's what? in it. Chanel West Coast is in it. Drama, I think's in it. I'm in it. Dingo's in it. I already said that, but yeah. Anyways, Damn, the way he tried it was fuck. cool, and and so we we're trying to figure out the cool things to do in snowboarding because, but it's like so much things just involves budget, which is like I understand you got to eat, I got to eat, but right, right, right. it's like sometimes it's hard. Like I'm not making money off a post. If it's me snowboarding, really. Right. Like, I don't contribute what I do snowboarding to my social, really. Mm. And, like, like my deal with Toyota is not really with my social. Right. I don't, like, I mean, we have to post for them and stuff, but it's, like, 
random things that I would do anyways. Like, right. Cool. I have a sticker on my board. I love my Tundra. Like I do that anyways. It's not like full, like, okay, you need to post this thing about the new RAV4. Right, it right. has this many miles per gallon. Like we don't have to do that. Yeah. So it's not really my social. It's for what I do on snowboard, what I do for content, like for them, like right. when I go out and do stuff for them, events I go to. So like it's hard with that because yes, I get paid a snowboard and the photographer shooting me snowboarding. So they should get some bread, but it's like at the same time, it's like, help me help you. I got tag. Like I always tag people when they shoot my photos. Right, right. And then that's the thing that we've always done, whether it's like in the caption or in the photo, but like, that's always been, that's why it's funny when I see people who have photos and they never tag people like in snowboarding, that. we always tag. The yeah, people. dude. And, and I think it's cool. Cause then you kind of like, the problem is, is if you're saying like, yo, there's not really budgets for yeah. you. Otherwise I got to come out of my pocket. That shit sucks. Yeah. You're providing an opportunity from a lot of people to come up and grow. Yeah. Like if you have a platform that they don't have cool, they can get the exposure off that. The idea is that I guess maybe like the creator, it's up to them to try to figure out how to parlay that into finding other yeah. gigs. You know what I mean? Like, but it's also like, I'm not, it's weird. You know, it's weird for both people. Cause like, right. Like I said, like you're like, I'm getting paid to snowboard. So technically I'm getting paid, but not really. Like I'm not, it's not affecting what, well, if we do a shoot or not, it's not affecting my pay, hmm. but it's also like, they're doing work so they should get paid for their work. So it's like trying to find that balance I think is always difficult where how can we, like am I paying for your travel to come out to this and do this shoot? Do I need to pay you a day rate? Right. Okay, because I have friends that, that shoot photos and stuff that have a day rate depending on who's, if it's a snowboard company, the day rate's lower because there's not as much money and snowboarding is like Sony comes out and they want to pay you a day rate. <laughs> yep. I mean, I mean, it's like, and it's still market value but it's just like when you look at snowboarding, you're not going to get that. I had a shot with a snowboard uh, photographer one time who was like kind of one foot in snowboarding, one foot out still. And a core company that, that I had to get a photo for an ad for, he was like charging so much. They're like, Louie, we, we only could afford one photo from him. <laughs> like, oh shit. I like, oh, well, guess the only one we're going to use, but it kind of sucks. Cause for me, like I love those photos, but they're not, like I don't really have the rights. Like I still got to ask, Hey, can I post this? Like, and it kind of sucks because I'm like, dude, I'm the one out there chucking my body right now. Right. And then you gouge this company that like would have been so hyped on a photo. And I, again, you what's fair yeah, for yeah, you yeah. and what's fair for them. Right. And, but it's at the same time, like when a dope photo, like I've had a couple of photos that I really like, they just never got used or never got sold. I don't know for whatever reason, nobody bought them or the magazine didn't run them or they didn't even try. And you're like, damn, dude, I really like that photo. Like I had this one photo. It was like two. It would have been two page spread of this huge rail that I hit in like Serbia or some random Eastern European country. And it was a team manager of a company. He like didn't even send in the photo. I'm like, bro, like I could have used you to get that run in a magazine. Or like I did one that was like my friend shot. Like there was a cutout in the half pipe, like huge gap, like 22 foot wall gap, and then like 22 foot wall again where you landed. And we shot in like the pitch black open exposure, so you see like the light the the stuff the stars, and, stars and stuff and it's like colored gels on the flashes and i don't know why that photo never ran it's like one of my favorite <laughs> photos of me man so you're like damn I'm i like i just got it the other day i saw it was like from years ago i, I, I don't know i found it on the internet or something i'm like man i really like this photo why damn. did it ever run anywhere how important was that writing like to get photos ran like when to- i was younger it was the shit like like Dude. is that how you made money? Like what was what was your biggest? Uh, yeah, we got in- we got incentives income. for it. Like there was a new contract, but then I got to a point in my career, like by the height of my like really like the apex when I was just crushing everything. I was like, I don't want photo incentives. Take photo incentive out. Give me podium incentive. Give me TV incentive. That's the only thing I care about. I'm only doing contests. Mm-hmm. I don't care about shooting a photo. Right. I'm like contest. Dude, I was like 22 out of 25 contests. I was on the podium for like three years. Boom. So I was like, well, I don't even want to go shoot photos. Like, if I get a photo in a magazine, dope. Like, but what's a So you're saying if bucks. you get on the podium, you get an extra, like you get yeah. an extra bag or something. Yeah. From each, from, you do that for each one of your sponsors. You got like, you know, five, six sponsors. Uh. Then I'll be making, some of them you'll be making more than what you're getting from the contest. That's crazy. <laughs> That's tight. That's how yeah, it's then, supposed to be. And then like on TV, boom, I have, I'm on ESPN, I'm on NBC, whatever. Bam. Get paid for that. Of course, 30 seconds. Because we, we, people would try to put like a video part incentive in my contract. I'm like, I'm not going to film. I'm right. only doing. But there was like a way, like, whoa, they like try to slide it in. I'm like, put nope. that out there. Give me TV. Yeah. I'll give you mainstream eyes rather than industry eyes. So would you get a bag incentives for um like doing a dance with the stars? 
No, because I couldn't be branded, really. Oh, yeah, right. I wish I could do... I mean, it would have been cool, like, if Nike... I was on Nike, if they would have gotten behind it and we could have done something dope. Or, like, I was on Monster at the time. But Monster, like, literally at the time told me, like, they only cared about what I did snowboarding. They didn't care about anything else. And I was like, snowboarding is so small. 22 million but, a like, week. But I would, like, paparazzi up by giving them monsters. And, like, they had the little monster shots at the time. Yeah. I was, like, hand them to the pop... Like, dude, I would float... And I was, like, I'd love with the paparazzi. They were cool. Because it was, like... To me, it was, like... I didn't even think, think about that. I didn't even think about that. They were probably on your ass. Yeah, but they were dope. Like, for me, like, I didn't care because it was, yeah, like, it was, fun. It was like, yeah, it was like, wow, dude, like, these people actually care about what I'm doing. Like, yo, I got some monsters. <laughs> like, let's hook it up. Like, product toss. You know? <laughs> Damn. And they're cool. Like, That's but, fucking wild. But, like, I, I was 21 years old. Like, like, whatever. Like, it was, I was dope. I was had a sick place at the Palazzo. I had, like, a two-bedroom, like, penthouse apartment at the Palazzo. During the shooting or something? While yeah, you're for the whole time on? I was here. I could have went back. They would have flown me back to Utah and back here, and I still had the apartment. I had a rental car, an apartment, and I could either live there or live in Utah and still have it for when I did the show days. I just, I'll stay in L.A. How long do you film for? It's two months? Bro, yeah, it was a while, because, but, like, we had, like, we had practice before. But, like, my season was the biggest season. Two people got kicked off the first week. I had to learn two dances the first week. Yeah, they don't do that. Like, some of them, they didn't even kick people off the first week. Oh. But I had, like, such a rad crew, like Kelly Osborne, one of my best girlfriends, Melissa Joan Hart, she was like, she's into snowboarding and stuff, so she was rad. Um, Chuck Liddell, good homie of mine from the show now, That's too. That's crazy. <laughs> Macy Gray, hilarious. She got kicked off quick, but she was so funny. <laughs> Damn. Um, you know, then there's like other people like, I did, oh, Donny Osmond, bro. Like, Donny Osmond is a man. Like, I had Maya, dude. I had, I gotta find it. It was back when flip cameras were a thing. Yeah. Remember the flip cameras? Yeah. I had Maya saying to me, you're a superstar. She didn't say get a superstar. She said, you're a superstar. Saying it to me in her trailer. I'm wow. Like, That's uh, wild. You know, because Maya's really beautiful. And yeah. that song is heater. And she sang it to me. What a wild time. Bro, bro. I'm like. From a snowboarding. Like, know, that's, that's what's crazy. I remember like, I came in late because I was in New Zealand riding. And I came in late to even start. And like, you're like, bro, talk about getting thrown. I'm like, oh, okay, you got to go to this nylon party. You got to go to this maxim party. You got to go to this party. This one you're going to go with your dance partner. This is the first time they that they're going to see you guys together. And it's like pumping up the show because the show's not on yet. And I remember like a, doing like this press thing and this lady's like you're really pale i'm like yo i've just been snowboarding for like two months and in, in new zealand where it's winter time yeah. like what do you think i'm gonna be like tanning yeah i got a spray tan for the first time ever doing dance with the stars it was, that was an experience was it <sighs> my girlfriend wants me to do it honestly look at me bro i'm fucking the way bro, well you get like after the first time like the first time i did it like they gave me this little thing. I was like, I look like, honestly, not to even be gross. I look like a black tampon. I'm like, what is this thing? I was like, like, oh, it's like a, it's like a male G string. I'm like, Oh no. Yeah. I put it on and you're like getting sprayed down. And it's like kind of cold, but then like, you're kind of like shiny. So I could see a sliver, like as in this like little pop-up tent, I could see a sliver of the mirror. And I was like, all like oiled. I was like, Oh man, I look pretty <laughs> buff right now. It looks good. <laughs> so then, but then after that, but I didn't like the way I felt like it was just, it just like felt st- weird sticky I like, and weird yeah, I just didn't like it and so then um, I tried to do the tanning thing because we had like a free could go tan as much as you want at like UVB or whatever the place is called down the street yeah I tried that, that was I like that shit I did that before I went to um like a, some beach place or whatever yeah. and like you have to do it you're gonna die when you go on this vacation yeah. I thought it was relaxing I'd just be chilling you'd like you'd fall asleep or whatever uh, I'm, like, I'm like four minutes five minutes I like I like count really slow in my head Anyways, I tried. Then I then I went to back to doing with the spray tan, and then I would only spray tan the like upper half of my body because I was always wearing pants. So like, why am I gonna spray tan and wear this little g string and make me feel mad yeah. and comfortable? Yeah. And I, <laughs> dude, so like that is like weird, but it was like it's funny because it's so weird. Like the stuff I was wearing was so weird. Like never wear that stuff on Halloween. And I would never spray tan. I would never go tan. But, like, out here, it was so normal. Normal as fuck. <laughs> like, dude, Donny Osmond, like, bro, he's been doing makeup since he was, like, 10 years old on himself. Yeah. Like, he, like him being on my show, I was like, bro, you've been dancing longer than I've been alive. That's crazy. Like, and this dude, he won my season, obviously. Maya took dance in college, but Donny was still doing his Vegas shows. While and doing, doing Dancing this shit. with wow. the Stars. Bro, and then watching his Dancing with the Stars routine, like, I'm like, this is awesome. I'm getting, like, a free show. I don't even have to pay it in Vegas because <laughs> I'm watching him do this. And it was like, like, watching him go and me go, it was like, this fool is like, 
an entertainer. That's crazy. Mine, I was like, you can tell this kid's definitely learning how to dance. Right. Donnie was like, the he theatrics was shit. insane, dude. But well, like, would you be, was it like, how was the scheduling? Like when you were shooting, were you oh. tied down every single day or could you like go do LA shit and feel like, or, I mean, did you even want to? Cause you were put on to like all those events that you had, you were like required to go to. I mean, nightlife, you're good, like, because it was good for the show. You had, like, publicists. Like, I didn't even know what a publicist was. I think I asked the show, like, who do, who should I get? Like, I don't know what a publicist did. did. I was like, I'm a snowboarder. I have an agent. And you didn't even know how to handle any of my stuff like that. But <laughs> it's like, snowboarding, dude. Like, yeah, he was like, like oh, have a good time at the party. You're going to go be on TV. He, or... like, he was raging at the party. But actually, he didn't, my agent at the time didn't even get me Dancing with the Stars. I had another friend who was an agent. He got me Dancing with the Stars. But, like, it just... It was like minimum of six hours a day practicing oh. because at the end of the day, here's the thing: you're live, right? So like, you don't want if fuck you up. don't learn the dance, you don't learn the dance. They're not you're like your the show is still gonna go on. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like it could you know you could crush it and get done early. You could be frustrating that you call it early, and they're filming the entire time. So the entire practice, all day. If you're there for six hours, you're filmed six hours. Damn. If you're there nine hours, they film nine hours. Right. They have a cameraman and, a, like, a director. So if you're, like, I'm practicing something and I ate shit, they're like, at six hours yeah. and 32 minutes, Louis ate shit. Right. They fought here. They, st- Louis stormed out. His partner slapped him. <laughs> she never slapped <laughs> him. But, like, they, like, we lucked out because, like, all our packages were good. But, like. Some of those drama packages, you're like, wow. But that really happened. Like, they really did get in a fight on a lot of it. That's crazy. You're in a room for this person. Like, I'm spending more time with this person than, like, Homies. Chelsea was, like, 20. I was 21. But, bro, we're spending more time with each other than I've ever spent with anybody in my life. Right. Like, more than I'm my family. Yeah. Again, snowboarding, if I'm frustrated, I can go do something else. Go take a run. Go learn a new trick. Go go do a different trick. Whatever dancing is like, I had to do that dance because it didn't matter. This is what I'm gonna learn, and I have to do it by this day. Hmm. It didn't matter. So it's like, and then like, if you're frustrated, I, I didn't know how to get rid of my frustration because I've never done it before. Right. And then like in dance, like you gotta do it this way. Well, I'm in snowboarding. I can do whatever I want, however right. I want. Well, why can't I do it this way? Because in dance, you can't do it that way. Why not? It's not in the syllabus. What the heck's a syllabus? The only <laughs> syllabus I know about is when they gave you the one in school. Yeah. You can't do it that way. That's not how the move is done. Well, at one point, freaking Fred Innovation. Astaire did his own move, and they call it the Astaire dance, whatever. Why can't I do my own move right now? Right. Damn. And then I'm wearing clothes I wouldn't wear on Halloween, live audience, live ju- or, you know, li- on TV, 22 million people are watching at home, a dance I have no confidence in. Bro, there'd be dances. I'd be like, oh, my gosh, best dance I've ever done, like, Cloud nine. Woo! Five out of you five. You did, did it this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. I'm like, yo, if you had seen me yesterday and then tonight, you've been like perfect tens. Yeah. I was getting beat, though. They're haters, man. I got getting beat by people that would trip. Like, no joke. Love Joanna Krupa. That's my girl. She's the best. One dance, she tripped, and she still smoked me on the score. I'm like, and I didn't even she do fell. that bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she almost fell. Damn. I'm like, and like, first first week, the guy made fun of my... Like it made fun of my hair. Like, oh, how can you hear the song with your hair over your ears? I was like, yo, I'm a snowboarder. You want a snowboarder? You got a snowboarder? I'm not cutting my hair for the show. Right. Next time, I'm like, I'm all right. Slick it back. You know, suave. They didn't even give me any love for it. I'm like, bro, I just <laughs> slick my hair back to fix this, what your critique yeah, yeah. last time. At least give me some love. Yeah. Don't conform to those motherfuckers. Yeah, but I look pretty dope. Because, yeah. like, I had these cool, I had a cool uh, <laughs> filmer and producer kind of guys working together. I had a good team. And, like, they would create, like, alter egos at some point. Like, that was, like, the thing. Like, okay, we'll play this up. I had, like, this little, like, slick back with, like, a little high pony, like, thin thing right there. Yeah. I don't even know here. But, like, we just, like, joked around with it and made it fun. Um, Man, what I, a ride, bro. Uh, you've been in the shit for so long doing so – like, think about all the people that you've met along the way. Yeah. Even just us getting coffee downstairs before this shit. Just, yeah. F- who were you just talking about that you know? Uh, who the fuck is the Waz? Waz the Waz, dude. Uh, the Waz is my guy. Yeah. What the fuck is his first name? Steve Wozniak. Steve Wozniak. Dude, from he, Apple. Yo, he started at Apple, and this is he, the first like, computer. He's emailing him like Christmas cards and shit. Oh yeah, dude. The Waz is the man. <laughs> like I would. The Waz is the man. He said. That's he a is. quote that I never thought my friends would ever say. <laughs> Bro, I mean, think about it. Like he started. He did. It That's all. why I didn't think any he of my friends would ever say the very first Apple computer. Bro, without his, yeah, but like without his, like Steve Jobs, visionary, 
right? I mean, it's Steve, teamwork makes the dream work. No matter if they want to say they were a team or not, it is what it is. But like they, Steve was was the brain, the brains, bro. And like he started something that we are addicted to. Yeah. Two of these fucking items, three, four grand worth of his shit innovation is sitting on this table right the now. The funny thing is, is I saw the like, plus first, the watch first gen. First gen, I forget, what was the first Apple one called? Or whatever, the desktop, I forget what it was called. iMac. No, that wasn't the first one. The iMac wasn't the first computer? No. Dave, Google? What? Google first, it. What was the first first, uh, first Apple desktop? It was like some weird name. Mac 1? Nah, it was, I swear it was the iMac. The, are you talking about the green one or the OG, OG, the, the brown? Very like Very first one. Apple One. Yeah. So okay. The, Shit. So there was one of those that just sold on eBay. We were talking about that. The first gen iPod selling for like 20 racks. Right. Yeah. The first gen Apple computer, like mint condition, whatever, was selling on eBay for some stupid number too. I think a, I think a, a museum ended up buying it. Yeah. But for like, like crazy amounts. Yeah. Dude. That, yeah. My but dad, anyway. My dad donated those to like our elementary yeah, school. Right, like whatever, yeah. Right. Because I think But that, that's what I'm saying. Like through your journey from what it, it's just from snowboarding, which is just fun as fuck. And then you got so good at it that it yeah. took you to a TV show. It's good. You're being seen tw- by 22 million people a week. Like that's and the now look, I'm right here. Black with yeah, no cream, now you're baby. Like, yeah, our views ain't 22 million, but you know, someday. And this should live forever. But, so. yeah, I mean, the Waz is probably one of the coolest people I say that. Like, Because to me, it's just like, he's just so cool. Like he's just <laughs> a rad guy. Like, he's, like when I talked to him, he was so happy. He was like a... Like he was like a supporter of mine on Dance with the Stars because he came to one of the episodes and he like that's how we chopped it up. Right. Like wasn't nobody introduced us. He was right. like telling me he watched me, enjoyed watching me on the show. I'm like, what? so weird. Yeah. Like that's how I met. I met uh, freaking Latoya Jackson. You know, like who the fuck Jerm- is Latoya Jackson? Jackson, the Jackson family. Michael Jackson. Oh right? shit! Yeah, right. Like, like Jermaine Jackson complimented me on my dance. I'm Bro, like, yeah, that's, that's what's weird. up. Only if the judges thought so. Yeah, yeah, you guys <laughs> should like, judge this shit. There's like random stuff, like Marie Osmond, obviously. Like it's just like so many people. Like Sean Johnson, who's a, still a friend of mine. Like she Iowa, was, bro. Yeah, she wasn't on my season. She's on a season before mine, but she did some stuff for like the red carpet that we had to do after every show. Oh yeah, and it's like became friends with her from that, you know. Right. And she's still a friend of mine. Like she and her husband both, and and so it's like cool with the people that you're still friends with, like because you find like the real ones out mm-hmm. of them. Like Waz is just always stoked. Waz like, a real one. <laughs> Sean, Sean's cool though because she's a Midwest. I think yeah. Midwest people are like different. Like we're on a yeah, we're on the same sure. page. The, Sean Johnson. All right, Iowa. Obviously, fucking everyone went bananas when she was yeah. doing the Olympics, and we we were all like we had like a little punk band, so we made all of our flyers Sean Johnson like <laughs> for all of our shows. <laughs> but then when I was doing the hip hop shit, she like followed our hip hop group and I was yeah. like oh fuck this is, she's like famous bro like she could help us do something <laughs> <laughs> that's what we thought at the time we're like wow she could really change our lives yeah. same with like fucking yeah nice I'm like yeah. man this is like anytime I got c- closer and closer to like fame outside of like you know shit that you dreamt about it was yeah. like wow every time it's always like a milestone I'm like oh cool if she likes like is paying attention that's dope to me like that means I can do anything I don't yeah. know why I just motivate somebody to like push harder or go harder or you know i mean you never know who's paying attention to your shit you just never know but like for you you never know who's paying attention to your shit you never know who's what that the fucking jackson five is all sitting at home watching you (laughs) fucking going hammer but it's like i like to think that they were probably watching somebody else i just happened to be on that that week they didn't know when that friend was dancing you don't know you don't know but no i'm saying but it is is weird like in like kelly osborne like my one of my best girlfriends right like met her like we had mutual friends but that was like when we were on the show and we kind of were like I mean, she doesn't take any crap, and I'm like, yeah, I believe that. I'm like, not like that, anyways. Like, I don't even know what's going on. I'm like a fish out of water <laughs> in LA in that scene, and so like we just like, whoosh, you know, we like kind of jailed right from there, right? Um, and you got in in uh, her pops let let you come take your pops to the show, his yeah, his dude, concert, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were uh, New Year's for Ozfest was sick, and they went to Ohio State football game the next day. And, like, I mean, Sharon and, and Ozzy, but mostly Sharon. Like, Sharon's, like, awesome. Yeah. I love her. I mean, Ozzy, we've kicked it, but, like, Sharon and I, like, yeah. embrace every right. time. And and that family is great. Like, and the stuff Jack's doing, it's cool to see what the stuff Jack's doing, too. But, yeah, Kelly's, like, my girl. Iconic-ass family. Yeah. I mean, crazy. they pretty much started reality TV. For fucking sure. Went hands down. Yeah, which is wild. That's crazy to think about. They started it. Wow. And that's probably Sharon's brainchild because she's like, 
genius. Crazy. That's fucking crazy. It's a great family. Yeah, crazy. Um, um, so when when going back into snowboarding, snowboarding for you, like how hard is it now to earn a living in snowboarding? How do you how do you like almost create your career for longevity? Even me filming, right? Like filming as a freelance. I don't work for nobody. Yeah. I have to think like. My homies are clocked into a job where they're getting their 401k, all this shit. I have to now think, fuck, I need to invest into my future so I, I can like retire off some money. And sh- you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do you do that? Especially snowboarding. It's like, you can't just, you can ride forever. But look at you were just talking about how many fucking things you've done to your body. Um, well, I feel like I, we did, my dad did a good job also, Brandon, like where I didn't have to win everything, right? As long as I was in the conversation. And then it's just like after that, it's just finding making it instead of a sponsorship making it a partnership with the company right they're understanding what you're trying to do you understand what they're trying to do we're working together Mm -hmm. rather than just putting a sticker on your board taking a check right right like really working with them and like making sure everybody's happy um and then that's really helped and then obviously like having i think it's more like having a whole package personality um Dance skills, P- dance skills, <laughs> snowboarding skills. It's just like people, like people want to see you. People are hyped on you and stuff like that. Because you can be the world's best snowboarder, but if you're not moving product, then you're no value to the right, company. Right, right, right. So I think you gotta be creative. But social media is changing things. Like there's people that like would never even been getting paid in snowboarding if it wasn't for social media. That's what's crazy. Yeah. It, it, do you think it's easy? I mean, the checks have to be completely different because I feel like bef- I mean, back in the day, it was like there's only so many snowboard films that came out, right? Like in yeah. social media wasn't a thing like it was sometimes YouTube shit. But like now I feel like maybe you could do, like I noticed um, Gimbal guy like did some, like he'll go out and did some shit and all of a sudden he's putting out like parts and he's like, oh, check out my full film or whatever. But he's collaborating with like Red Bull and all this shit. Yeah. And it, like gives you the position to like make dope shit. If you can make dope shit, these companies will want to fuck with you, right? Yeah. Um, do you feel like it's, the checks are sm- what? what like, I think the checks are smaller now. Than it, they have sure. to be smaller right, right now. Right now, they're way smaller because you have I mean, to do so much be, more but shit. But it for- also comes down to like how much snow did the West Coast get? Is how are sales for everybody? How is is snowboarding still growing? I mean, it's just so much stuff that goes into it. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, with social media now too, you see people like not even in snowboarding, but just in general, like paid per post rather than like a year salary. Right. Like in snowboarding before, it'd be like, yo, you just you're on right now it might be like okay you have to do this many posts for this uh, each time a month you need to do these hash you know it's like you see stuff like that across the board so it's like that changes now too where you, you more the influencer market market opened up too where it's like this person's famous on instagram but they don't really do anything right that like relates to this but they get views their roi is good and i'm again i'm not talking just snowboarding but i'm saying in general like, totally you see <clears throat> deals are kind of changing so you kind of figure out a way to structure in this new we're in the new world so what do you do what have you done uh you told me you hate it like you hate i, hate, to make I don't like instagram because i just don't understand it like i can't under, like i post something that i think is so dope and nobody else thinks it's dope so right. maybe i have really bad taste <laughs> um but i just like with the sponsors i have i love I mean, I've done this for a while. Like, I've quit big paying sponsors because I didn't agree. We weren't on the same page. Mm. So it's like par- finding the right sponsors and partnering up with them. Right. So all the sponsors I have, Toyota, I've been with for, you know, eight years or something. Damn, really? And it's been great. And yeah. they understand they want to do whatever. Like, how can they support whatever I want to do? Yeah. And then I'm like, anything they want to send me to to, like, speak at, represent them do anything i'm there because right. I, I it's fun yeah i've done nhra i've done i've driven a pace car at nascar i spoke at an engineering conference i've gone to like two different auto shows i've done their like hotel tacoma camping i'm doing a couple more stuff this summer like i've just whatever i can do let's do it because it's, it's like i've never been doing an nhra race it was so fun yeah like like tasting like nitrous nitro what a nitrous whatever it is like you just dab it in that's what, what they're doing it yeah it's crazy what the fuck we did like a little edit for that g-shock i've been with g-shock and g-shock's a company that i went up and approached them a while ago like yo i really like what you're doing with nigel sylvester was on at the time stevie williams is still on but like i love what you're doing with them and like your whole vibe and everything like how can i get you a part of it Boom, I've been on with them for a while. Crazy. Ethica, I've been with Ethica since before it was even a company. Malcolm was just sending me underwear. I'm like, right. you're not even selling this, you're just making it, making it, right? Yeah. Melon's a new sponsor that I got, and they're a hat company. Like, 
cool, we want to create one of the best beanies and the highest quality everything, like, and you, we want to use you because we like what your vibe's about, we like what you stand for, cool. So now we're, like, creating, like, a beanie of, like, high-quality beanie with, like, cashmere or right, right, alpaca right. or whatever, but, you know, they're a dope one. Wiener schnitzel, right? That's my boys, too. Wiener schnitzel? Yeah, have you ever been to Wiener schnitzel? No. Bro, it's so good. Really? Chili cheese dog, chili cheese is that in L- Is that in LA? Yeah. We got them in Utah, too. Yeah, I feel like, where is this one at in LA? All over. I ate, I ate at the hot dog spot, that the uh, the train car on Sunset. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trash. K- Kearney's? Carney's? Carney's. Sorry if yeah, you're but they a got the listener. they got the, the chocolate dip bananas that are good there. Really? Yeah, I used to go there when I my dog. My, don't tell me about this shit. Dingo used to live up at the top of Mount Olympus, so I used to like. Yeah, that was there. like right where I lived. I was like, I literally lived like a block from this shit on Sunset, and would like, it'd be late night, you yeah. know. Yeah. So then, but like, anyways, yeah. So yeah, like Wiener Schnitzel, so like, they're like a good like my cheat meal spot. They got them in Utah. My friend's families, you know, started it, so it's like it works, right? They yeah. do a lot of charity stuff, which is what I'm about. Mm-hmm. So like, that's dope. Um. And then I did a deal with this jacket company called Tatris that's like Japanese owned, Milan made, high end. I love their jackets. It's comfortable, it's cool, it fits with what I like and my vibe. Boom. You know, so like every company I have, like it makes sense for me. Yeah, right. Like I've quit companies because I was over it. And I've joined companies because like it might not pay a lot, but it's like something that I like to be associated with. I like rocking with them and everything like that. Right. That's interesting. What's uh for competition, what's like the craziest uh podium f- money that people offer which competition off- offers the highest Did the they highest tell one, that? The high, yeah the highest one that i've seen is one we had was 75 racks for first what was that for locks open in switzerland locks. the crazy thing is like i think i got like oh man i got like fifth there and i was like whatever crap money yeah <laughs> And the two of the judges, they had this new, they were trying to figure out, it's gotten it dialed in now, but they were like, this, the people that are doing like locks open and a couple of them, they had their own judging format and they were like trying to make it work. And so two of the judges judge flow, which is like your overall impression. And there's like five judges that judge like each hit, which right. is, it was stupid. But the two flow judges were like, told me like, oh yeah, man, like, um, we had you in third. And I'm like, well, that's cool the only reason i'm mad about it is because it was like a 20 grand difference yeah <laughs> like these are, but these dudes had me in third but it didn't matter because the way the format for the judging scores were were formulated was like they didn't they couldn't control it right i was like man i don't care about getting fifth or third whatever because i didn't win obviously i want to win but that was like 20 rack difference well so is that like for snowboarders is it like is your salary what you get from your sponsors and these are like your bonuses? So we have, the way I was, what we did was salary So every month. From a, de- from, a um, from a brand. Yeah. Right. Then, then you would have your incentives. That would be podium incentive, photo incentive, video incentive. So photos in a snowboard magazine, video in a snowboard video part, TV, what I would do, podium would be what I, but you had it like, these tier contests, you get this much for first, second, third. Right. These tier contests, you get this much. And then the contest itself pays you. Right. So that's like, like, I mean, some of them are mellow. Like the, so a lot of them, like to qualify for the Olympics, you're getting like 10, 15 grand to win, which isn't that much. Right. But, but so, it's the Olympics. But yeah, but I'm saying that's not the Olympics. That's oh, to, to qualify, qualify for right. us. I mean, each country sets their own qualifying. So they don't give you money to win the Olympics, do they? Some some do like through like the we call it your national governing body. Like my friend Kyle Snyder, he won uh wrestling and I think he got like two hundred and fifty racks. Holy shit. From USA wrestling. Wow. He got like in snowboard, I think they gave him like two hundred fifty. Ten grand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like nothing. Damn, that's crazy to fucking that's And the- it's funny because like our USOC, which is US Olympic Committee, we're all so everything underneath that so USSA would be the snowboarding federation. Everything is all based on donations. Mm. Whereas other countries, most countries around the world are funded through the government. Right. So like, so they're getting it's checks. crazy, right? You see like where the U.S. ski and snowboard headquarters are in Park City. That land was donated. Mm. And that land's like multi-million dollar land. It's not a lot of land. Yeah. But where it is in Park City, multi-million dollars. Somebody's like, you can have it. The Damn. building they put on there, all that money's donations. Like it's crazy, the donations for everything. So I mean, some 
federations or or some like USA Wrestling. I mean, I thought that US Ski and Snowboard would get more than that, but I don't know where they. But he got paid, so good for him because yeah. the Olympics itself, as the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, they're not paying you. Right. That's so You're crazy. not even allowed to have branding during the Olympics. You have to run everything stock. So like your snowboards, there's no stickers on it. Your goggles companies have to give you custom straps where it's like three inches. Is as big as the logo can be. So if you look at like an Oakley uh, goggle strap during the Olympics on skiing or snowboarding, the O is different than you buy at the store. Wow. They have to be shrunk. And you can't like, I can't make a custom board with like my logo on it. There's regulations. Like it has to be like, you have to sell these snowboards. So dude, Kanye should fucking get Yeezys on all his shit's boring as fuck. So if you just do all that for the Olympics and he bro, gets every rider to rock Yeezy shit, like I know, I like a love, beige ass coat. <laughs> I would run, I would run Yeezy. Hell yeah, every, that would Yeezus, be the hardest. Yeezus yo, season. that would be the hardest collab, bro. He he uh he got like a like a double decker plane from Adidas. Oh, uh, that's like the one. Do Is that the one that? that Jay Jay and them fly? No, that's that's Puma. Whoops. No, no, they gave him a plane. Do you see the one that Drake got today? No, I heard something like oh my talking about it. Dog, it is insane. I don't understand why or how he will be able to afford this shit because it is like a fucking presidential, whatever that shit's called, the fucking big one. Yeah. It's like that shit. It's got like a full living room in the thing. Why? Do you think he's really paying for it? He's, it's some like in the video it makes it look like it's his. Like he bought it and he it's got the owl on the back. There's no other brand on it. It's his. Do yeah, you think it's maybe like the rapper, the Raptors are like what Raptors? Oh, the Raptors. Yeah, like, you know, like yeah, he's maybe. like an ambassador. Yeah, maybe it's their like, like like Meek Meek's homie is the one who owns like I think he owns like Fanatics and he owns like the Seventy Sixers. Like that dude's flying him from jail to the game and the right, helicopter, right, right, all right. that. Don't get me wrong, Meek's got money, but I'm saying like yeah. some of that stuff he's not he doesn't have to pay for. It. So he might not be he might true, be in a true, huge true. private jet. Who knows? That's my thing. I just need to get somebody who wants to like go snowboarding all the time and just yo bring the jet. Let's go. You know Meek? Yeah, a little bit. Um, he's like my one of my favorites. Though. He's so good. Him and Ace Hood. He came to. When did he get out of jail? When was that? He's in he's in L.A. I think right now. No, I mean like when we were on tour, he yeah. he walked backstage when we were in uh, wherever. Where is he from? Philly. Philly. Yeah, we were, were we in Philly? I think so. But he like walked by me backstage and I was like, oh shit, that's tight. <laughs> Bro, I've I've listened to Meek for my contest. I listened to the same song for contests. <sighs> really? From 22 to this day. Wow. Every year. It might be a different song, but it's always been a Meek song. Right. At the Olympics, <laughs> it was Eclipse, bro. It was, I think it was... Uh, I had one clip song was like my strap in song, like when I was like getting ready to go. And then uh, Popeyes was, I think, my, my song I snowboarded to at the contest. Damn. Oh, man. How, 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 I love, dude, Pusha T also. Mm-hmm. Huge fan, Pusha T. Ugh. The the um, the shit I love is is when I, when I would go snowboarding was um, every time I was pulling into our park, it was like I had to do it. Hail Mary, Tupac. Oh, yeah. Come with me. It's I would be playing that shit so loud in my grandma's Corsica that I own, and I would literally snowboard four days a week. I didn't know anyone there, so yeah. I'd go up, and I'd sleep in the shotgun in my uh, sleeping bag at, yeah. uh, at our hy Do you have hy in Ohio? No. No, it's that? like it's like Ralph's. It's like our grocery no. store. But, yeah, I'd sleep in there, and then I'd get up and go. Don't tell me that. That's dedication. I loved it. I was more of a biggie. Oh, yeah. I was East Coast. But yeah, I, was I don't like know. Biggie. But I, I like Meek, Pusha T, Ace Hood. That's like you get me hyped. Right. Who's Who's like um, the biggest like musician that you would say you're friends with, or the weirdest like relationship? Ozzy. Ozzy is super I mean, weird. Huh? <laughs> Ozzy's pretty big, <laughs> bro. That this is, is true. this is how I put it. Right. We go to dinner at uh, Nobu. Nobu with the family. Love it. Right. And we're like walking for some reason. The section we were in is like kind of private. Nas is sitting there. I'm like, damn, that's Nas. Like, yeah. Crazy. Holy cow. Bro, I watched Nas rubberneck when Ozzy walked by. Like, whoa. I'm like, if Nas is rubbernecking for you, like, you, that's yeah, when you know you're, you're Ozzy. big. Like, that's weird. Because I was like, damn, that's Nas. I love hip hop. Like, Ozzy, I love Ozzy, right? I've always, I've knew Ozzy before I knew Ozzy, but still, it's like more family. Like, I 
been right. I got an Aussie draw. Aussie gave me a drawing. I got one. He's given two drawings away. I have one of them. Wait, what do you mean? Like he always doodles. Ozzy doodles? Mm -hmm. Is he good? He's like some cool stuff. He's got different like random things. So mine's like this devil, this like face that turns into like a devil head. That's so crazy. <laughs> and I remember I was just I was sitting at the table and I'm like, what do you do with those? He's like, oh, I just doodle. It's like good for my mind, whatever, whatever. And I was like, well, if you ever want to get rid of them, <laughs> I'm yeah. trying to build up my art collection. He's like, here you go. I'm like, all right, well, sign it to me so you know I'm not going to like slang this. Like I don't, I'm not, I didn't want it for that reason. Right. But boom. So then I see him like. A year later, I'm like, yo, Ozzy, I got a, sh I got, look at this. I got it framed. It looks dope, whatever. And he was like, oh, that's cool. He's like, you're, I've only given away two of them. And, and so Kelly's wow. like, yeah, he's only given two away. Just anything, not like a print or anything. But yeah, I got that. But so like, that's like cool. Like, it's always funny because, like, I don't, I don't like think like Ozzy's, like, Ozfest was the first time I've seen Ozzy play. Right. But you've known him like, forever. I knew Aoki forever before I saw him play. Because he's mad all about snowboarding and shit. Like, yeah. he'll always be out so there. So, I've known Aoki for, like, nine, ten years. Right. Um, you know, some of these people, I've, but, like, then, I like, the hip-hop people, like, that's what I like, run. Like, I'm, like, more hyped on that. Yeah. Right? Like, I met Meek when him and, he and Ace Hood were on tour. Mm. And they're both Ethica. But, like, even Ace Hood's, like, such a chill dude. Like, I hung out with him when he came to Salt Lake last time. And, like... But see, I'm like pretty frothed out when I like hanging out with Ace. I'm like, dude, I love Ace Hood. And then you meet him and they're cool. Cause you know, I hate when you like, I've met like, I met Fabulous before. Yeah. At the Nike, when I was on Nike for nine years, right? I was the second one they signed to snowboarding. So I'm at the employee store. I'm like, so yo, yo, what, whatever. I was like trying to holler at him and say, what's up? He was like a dick. I'm really? Like, Bro, you first off, you look like a scrub right now. Yeah. In the employee store, which I get it. He's like, oh, Told him I want to take pictures with people. I was like, bro, I've, I'm a, I'm a Nike athlete. Like you ain't even a Nike athlete. Like my budget, I can buy whatever I want in <laughs> yeah. here. Right now. Like, yeah, with that they're giving me, like Louis, whatever you want. Like no one's going to care. I'm the only person who's talking to you. But like I was a huge Fabulous fan, so right. like bummed me out. Damn. The funniest thing is is uh, I had a signature G-Shock release after that in New York for G-Shock's 30th anniversary but my watch released that night too and he was at the 30th anniversary party I wanted to be like fuck yeah, you thanks for coming to my party bro <laughs> yeah it's right it's not really my party but my watch released yeah. here it's the only signature watch that came out this right. time but but like, it bummed me out because I was such a big fan of his music and he was a dick like Damn. he wasn't a friend like he could have been like yeah like can we do it like on the low like I don't care see I don't care like about I don't want to blow up somebody's spot. Like, let me get a photo with you when I'm meeting with a friend and it's chill. Yeah, right. But, like, I'm not also, I don't have an ego. Like, I can put my ego to the side. Like, yo, I love you as an artist. Like, respect. Like, can I get a picture with you? Like, keep it cool. I'm not going to come right. up to you and, like, blow up your spot and make it all awkward. Or, like, if my friend's introducing, like, whatever, I keep it chill. But, like, sometimes, like, I don't care. Like, I'm a fan. Yeah, like, right. I do that with snowboarders. Like, and it's like uh, it's good for Nike too at the time. You know what I mean? Like right, if you in the employee store, bro, there's nobody in there. Right? Like this is a Nike town with yeah. like a ton of fans. You weren't getting hounded, but that like bummed me up. Like Ace, awesome. Meek, awesome. Yellow of awesome. My boys. Uh, I guess uh, all these be about people like Bun, mm -hmm. dude. Bun, I could hit up Bun, and he's like genuine about everything. Like yeah. I'd be like, yo, like when that happened at his house, he got, you know, I brought up, I'm like, yo man, glad you're all good. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Like right. just real. Right, like, right. I like real people yeah. that like understand like they're, they're just, they're just good people. Yeah, I don't know. I hear that. <laughs> no, I feel that. That's crazy. But you know I, what I'm saying though? Yeah. Like, that's why sometimes I don't like meeting people that I like. Cause like, they I might fuck up it up. Yeah. Cause I'm like, yeah, <sighs> no, I hear you. But it's funny. Like, man, I got, I have a friend that shoots for Eminem. You shoot for Jay Z and Beyonce. Who, like, who, who, who shoots for Eminem? Uh, my friend Jeremy. Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, de, de, what's his last name? De, I don't know. I always, I, say, think of it. I always think of it in my head. You know when you have somebody's name, I say W Tat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, don't know how to say I know. It. He, Trust the shooter. He's fucking dope. Yeah. He's super dope. So I met dope. him because he was shooting stuff for Red Bull for the music festivals. Right. But like you guys, see, that's like cool. Like for me, it's like I got, like, I was a Schoolboy Q fan before, obviously Jay-Z fan before, Eminem fan before, but like knowing like two people that work for them and I'm like, yo, how was it? Like I'm intrigued because if you're like, yo, they're cool, like I enjoy it, then it makes me like them more. Like, yeah, for sure. Because they're like, oh, you're tr like, you're treating my friend cool and like you don't treat them like, oh, they work for me, whatever. Right, they're right, cool. Right. Like right. you travel with them, he travels with M all the time and it's like, 
okay, I like that person. He seems like a rad dude. Like, totally. It's you hear these stories, you're like, nah, my friend works for him, and they're he's super. Terrible he says they're person. super nice. Yeah, yeah, blah, blah. But if they say he's good, and it contradicts what the media says, right? Exactly. It's like To. I met To. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, oh, To's a dick. I'm To. I went to this Larry Fitzgerald softball event. I went on the bus my first year there. To was the first person to say hi to me. Nice to me ever since. I'm like, I will always support T.O. Yeah, people be trusting the media too much. T.O. Like. is so nice, dude. And he's like, like he's competitive as hell. Most yeah. competitive person I've ever met. But to be the first person, like, I'm the only snowboarder. It's like every NFL, NBA, all the new legends came up to me first person, talked to me. For then, see, I'm again, I'm a loyal person. For then, always yeah, have always love good for T.O. But I, I like to, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, people, I hate, I don't, like in New York, I like New York because they like, if they don't like you, they tell you they don't like you, anybody. Totally. LA, you never know. Like people are kind of yeah. like, eh, you're a little fake. Right, and like, right. Joe, just be honest. Like if yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm like, I'm a kook, I snowboard, cool. You follow me snowboarding, what? <laughs> snowboarding is just snowboarding. Like yeah. it's not, and not anything that dope. Like snowboarding's fun, but like, I don't look at it, but people should be fans of mine. Right? Sure. I, just, I snowboard. Yeah. But like some people are like, I got that like swagger, like oh, I got, I'm insta famous. I'm like, what's insta famous mean? Yeah, right. I remember when Snapchat came out. Uh, I didn't know who Yes Yes Jules was or whatever. It right. Is. I and didn't know about her. And somebody at Rebel was like, oh, the shoes out there for Rebel. And they're like, oh, she's like a Snapchat celebrity or something. I was like, what? <laughs> what what's that? Like, Snapchat was pretty new too. Yeah. But at the time, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, man. I was like, what? Huh? She carved her way. She's, <laughs> I mean, she's like, props. like music mogul you sort of now. Find your lane and do it. That's but it's crazy. just like I don't people that look at themselves like they're better. I hate. Yeah, but I totally. think it's also being from the Midwest where you're like, I don't know. You just look at things differently. Yeah, I feel like it's got. It's, I don't know. People always say that shit too. They'll be like, Hey, uh, what's it like? Is is Beyonce like shitty to work for? I'm like, what? <laughs> no. They're like I heard she's mean. I'm like, no, she's the nicest person the nicest person and the hardest working shit. I've never been so motivated in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just by being around that person. It's, but I say, I, I, I tell like, again, like I don't care. Like I'm such like a, like a kooky person. I'm like, yo, okay. So if Jay-Z walked by right now, would he be like, what's up, Ben? Like, that's a real <laughs> question because like, to me, I'm interested. Like, that's cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, like when it with blue Ivy, like, right. Like, is she like funny? Like, like I, I'm not like prying, like annoying, but to me, I just like, it's just so intriguing to me, like, because it's something that it's so different than my life. Like, but it's cool to know that that plays into you caring about an artist as a fan. Yeah. Like, like it does make sense. Like, no one wants to like someone if they're a fucking terrible person. You're like, no, nah, yeah. I heard that dude punches his fucking <laughs> his fans in the face all day. <laughs> like, yeah, Whoa, all right. And it's funny because like, I, I like I have other friends that will be kicking it with somebody, and I'm like, oh, they're friends. Oh, okay, I'm instantly cool. Like I, that person's rad. Right, right, right. Like there, I had friends though. I didn't even listen to their music. <laughs> and yeah. like, I just was friends with him. Like, I'm not a big EDM fan, but like Aoki is like a good friend. Sure. So I like support him. Totally. I, I don't, my first and only gold medal that I ever held from the X Games was Ken Blocks. Ken Block, good dude. Good dude. Very He's good dude. He's so funny. He, uh, we, did I tell you about him? How we linked with him? No. We had, um, my homie Taylor lost all four of his limbs in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then, uh, Ken like was drifting and shit and Taylor Taylor's story like blew up on the internet basically like yeah. no pun intended and he got so famous right just people were hitting him up his yeah. story is so motivational and stuff and I was managing all this stuff people were offering him hey we'll take you here we'll put you on this trip we'll take you to the Bahamas we'll do yeah. all these things like everyone wanted to help and he's like dude if he hates being like yeah. like that but he's like if there's anything I can get out of being famous or whatever quote yeah. unquote he's like I want to fly in a blue angel which we they told us that was like they can't because of insurance policy or something like that. And then he goes, and I want to ride in Ken Block's car. And we're like, all right, we can let's try to get that. So we made like a whole video challenging Ken, and it's us like we're all sitting at the table. It starts out, and he's like, we're watching a Ken Block video, and he's like, that ain't shit. Like I can do that. And we're like, 
you could beat Ken Block. This video, is, this guy's crazy. He's like, get my driving, my driving hands or whatever he says. And he's like, I'm going out. And he starts walking out. It's all cinematic and shit. And he gets in this car and we like duct taped his, uh, his prosthetic legs to the gas and the clutch. Yeah. And then my homie would shift for him. And then we like duct taped his hands to the wheel <laughs> to a lawnmower thing. You know how you can turn yeah. a lawnmower? And he, we literally drifted him in the snow. Like he was just doing donuts and fucking going crazy. And we filmed it <laughs> and we put it, told everyone to tag Ken. Yeah. Put it on the internet. Everyone's talking shit to Ken. Like, hey, Taylor thinks he's better than you. Taylor thinks he's better than you. And they hit us up on the email. Like, hey, this is Ken Block. This is Ron. Like, it's the yeah. dude that runs the shit. But he's like, Ken saw it. And he like wants you guys to come to this event. We came down. He took all the homies down to uh, Missouri. We all drove down there. Put us up in hotels. Brought Taylor out. <laughs> took him and drifted through the woods. Going like a hundred sideways. Yeah. Like, <laughs> And man, dude, and then he like invited us out to the house for their Christmas party and shit. And he was just mad, like the coolest dude, dude ever. He's 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 the truth. And the thing, bro, the thing is crazy is like everybody knows Ken, like Rally, yeah. right? Jim Connor. Mm-hmm. This fool started DC. DC, <laughs> like that's what's the the, the DC. Uh, uh, what's the what's the park? The Playhouse or whatever the shit was called. Like the his private park. What was the DC Labs? Mount, Mountain Lab. Mountain Labs. Yeah, man, that shit was fucking. That might have been even. I think. That might have he might have sold it by that point even he had the mountain lab then he had a rally track too out there, and then he had like problems he they sold the mountain lab and then the rally track he like was getting complaints and even though he's so far away, but like the nicest dude, dude so chill he like we thought when he invited us out to come for Christmas it was a Christmas holiday party for ho- ho- or hooligan yeah and we're like man it's probably all like the charity cases he helped through the year like that he's inviting out and we came out me Taylor and Danielle his his wife now. And we pull up to the party and it's just like the fucking crew that was like <laughs> drilling the yeah. car and just like 20 people. Yeah. And we're like, yo, where's everyone else at? And they're like, what? <laughs> where's like all the other people that are handicapping shit? Like, <laughs> But see, that's the thing that's like dope. And it's funny because like Ken's one of those people that you still like, like again, friends, but they're like, damn, dude, you start at DC. Like, <laughs> D fucking C, yo, that's crazy. Like his house was so dope. Like, he, we he loves ping pong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's just everything. He yeah, but he's like, we gotta play this game where we drink. We like drink when we do something, but you have to like, if someone fucks up the game, you have to slap a ping pong ball at their yeah. back, bare back. And I had to do it to his wife, and he's like, give it to her. Like you cannot go stop. I'm like, yo, I can't beat your wife down in this in your house. Like she just fed us dinner. Like yeah. <laughs> she's like, you gotta do it. <laughs> Yeah. man it's it, there's a lot of cool people i feel like in the extreme sports world and i feel like what's dope about it is that you guys risk your life you know what i mean to, yeah. for the sport but i think most people like we don't do it for that reason like we didn't get into snowboarding to go to the olympics or anything like that you didn't get into skateboarding right. or any of those sports you should do it because you love it right totally and i think it's kind of crazy if you think like i always think that I didn't. I got into snowboarding because I loved it. Ended up everything worked out. But like when people, that people follow snowboarding like that, like, yo, you're my favorite snowboarder. It always still trips me out because, like, I'm still like watching basketball. Yeah, <laughs> whatever, right. You know what I mean? Like, but like snowboarding, like I just snowboard. Like, what? That yeah. Doesn't. But it's weird because it was you. It's a newer sport, so it's growing totally. still. Yeah. So when I was in Ohio, like. I was like trying to get anything I could do with snowboarding. You go to the skate shops and you watch the videos and that's it. And now it's like, it's so accessible. Mm -hmm. And you also are very accessible to the fans. Like you go to a contest, like if you wanted to punch me in the face, it would be pretty easy to punch me in the face. There's not really a lot of security. So you can have, but you can interact with the people. And I think that's, what's cool. Like meeting people that like are older that grew up watching me and, or like compliment style or, um, that I inspired them to start snowboarding, whatever. That's what I like, right? Yeah. My whole thing with, with Dancing with Stars, if I could take less than 1% and introduce them to snowboarding, whether they try it or just are a fan, it's like, it's helping the whole industry, whether you... Right, totally. Because you're putting money in snowboarding companies' pockets that are paying people who film or do contests. So it doesn't matter. Like, I don't care about that. But I'm just trying to introduce a sport to people that I have a passion for, that I love. That's why I like taking people snowboarding. Yeah. Like, I took, like, Jim Jones snowboarding. And there's, like, seeing how... Like, I had a friend coaching each one of the homies, and I was working with him. But just seeing how stoked they were on snowboarding made me feel so good because I was like, yeah, now you get to see what I get to do every day. Yellow Wolf, same way. Like, I took Yellow Wolf snowboarding. Right. And seeing how much he loved it 
made me so stoked because it's like, yeah, this is what I do. Like, it's so cool to share your passion with somebody yeah. and like to see it clicking. Like with Jim, like we had a magic carpet and like, I would watch him, his friends too. Like my friends would be not even unstrapped. These guys were already like running to get back on the magic carpet. Cause they were so hyped to go again. <laughs> It wasn't like they were getting forced or they're so dope. Not, it's cold. The yeah, but, and it's also like therapeutic for people that don't, they're not going to go like hard like you do, but like dude, to go Jim out and tried ride. To do, Jim tried to, we had a YouTube, I had a YouTube series with Red Bull and I did it for that. Jim was trying to rap and snowboard at the same time, like with his phone going and he caught his toe edge so hard. It was so funny. And I was like, oh, and he was like loving it. And the other day, like not the other day, like two summers ago, I was in the studio and he's like betting his friend, like, man, I can do, I bet you I can air the half pipe. I bet you $1,000 you can't. I bet you $1,000 I can't. Send Louis, it. what do you think? I'm like, well, Jim, are we talking like, <laughs> cat, like cat, but are we talking a mini pipe or a 22 foot half pipe? He's like, I don't know. What do you think? I'm like, mini pipe, maybe in a day. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah 22? Like 22. Fuck, man. Tell this one, take 22 bet. Don't take the 22 bet. Yeah. Like, but like, he just loves it. And it's like, there's just other people like, I want to take, like obviously I can like take people that like I love like athletes that I'm fans of. Right. But like I really want to take Kevin Hart snowboarding. Oh, that'd be I think funny he skis. As fuck. Yeah, I feel like, he, like I think I've seen some shit. He can't. I but mean, now he has that uh his YouTube series that's like all you should figure so out. many. It's like an athletic one where he I just know, took what like, the fit. What Bro, the fit? I'm a big Kevin Hart fan. You know. I want to do what the f- I already told one of my friends who's friends with those guys. I said I want to do what the fit with snowboarding because yeah. I have a, already had the skit in my head. Yeah. The one with him and Jack Black playing basketball at Venice Beach is so, so fucking funny. funny. I was dying when he fucking substitutes his clone. <laughs> fucking dying, yo. I like when he's like, when CP3, I'm not even a CP3 fan, but why, again, watching that made me more like CP3 fan. When he like funny. swats the kid's yeah. ball. Just like didn't give a fuck. I'm like, yo, <laughs> dude, that would be hard. If you did that shit with him, that would be super hard. I'm trying well, to find this. There it is. Anyways, like, but like, I just want to take people that i like i'm fans of snowboarding right but like my thing is is too is i don't care like if we film it we don't film it we shoot photos we don't fit shoot photos if you don't want to be around anyone i'll take you to a place or a mountain where we're not going to see a lot of people like i don't really care i just like get it all stoked yeah. like yo big fan of yours let's get let's go have fun snowboarding like right but i'm not doing it for the gram right right i don't care let's, let's just do something fun yeah i'm gonna this winter i'm gonna come out and find you and i'm gonna show you how dope i am Oh, dude, it's so funny. So he hits me up. I'm gonna just tell the people. He hits me up. Tell me you're in you're in Breck with all your boys, the whole all squad, all the whole squad, and I'm like, "What's up?" He's like, "Yo, we're, we're here." I'm like, "Okay, what well, you want to go out? My friend's got the club. We can go to Cecilia. I'll get you guys <laughs> bottles. What you guys want to do?" He doesn't hit me up. He's like, oh, sorry, man. We passed out. I'm like, damn, they went hard. I was about to. Dude, I had him altitude up. sickness or whatever. I got fucked up really hard. That shit sucked. Anyways, I go to over to your guys' house. Yep. Y'all are like, you know, before I'm texting, you're like, oh, man, everybody's sleeping. We uh, we just got back from the mountain. It's like 4 o'clock. We did first chair to last chair. And like, dog, there was not, it was not, I was thinking like, you guys were going to be on some like partying. And it was like, <laughs> it was like my type of party, like playing like Game. board games yeah, and like man. pool games and we, all that. he came over and i was like i don't know what you expect this to be but everyone's whooped and fucking not trying to turn up i, I couldn't even like really get drunk i felt like like when we were trying to drink i was like uh, need so much water to stay hydrated i was like this fuck i'm full as fuck yo i can't get full, uh, drunk off this shit we played that slap ball is that what it's called Spaz. 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 It's your game. How do you not even... Well, it's my homie Tim's game. That game, I'm obsessed with that. I almost wanted to buy a pool table just to play that game. Me too. Right in this office, we could probably fit one and play Spaz. This shit is the most fun game. When we did that, we, we did it at my homie's bachelor party, and we played it. And Dude, I was bleeding, sweating. Like We played it all day. Then you get drunk sometimes, and you're playing it, and it just sucks. But yeah, you and me, we ended up in the... I won. You did win. That's all I cared about. But I love how much your lady got mad. Like, that was the best. Because <laughs> she'd be going at it, too. Like, like ah, fuck Everybody. It was so fun. Dude, it's because it's just, yeah. It's but a- see, that's, like, my stuff. Like, right, like, nowadays, like, I'm, like, go to the gym or I'm going snowboarding. But I, like, when I'm home, I'm chilling. Mm-hmm. But, like, I'll play board games all day. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just, I'll go out. But, yeah. like, just, I don't have that. I'd Do you drink? Just, you like, don't drink, out. though. I don't drink anymore. Yeah, you don't drink. You used to? Yeah. Yeah. Why just don't quit. you drink? Just because? Stop. I went to like a new trainer. He was like anti and I was like put in so much work and got my ass kicked for five and a half weeks there. And I was like, 
Ah, oh, I told my friend Stevie Bell I was skating with him, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna go for two months. He's like, it's already been six and a half weeks. You're at two months. Go for three. Okay, I'm gonna go for three. And then it was like, you have such a short window. Let's be the healthiest you can be while you can. You know, you huh. like anything can be taken away in a blink of an eye. So let's just focus. Anything I can do at at 23, I can do at 33, 35. You go to the Vegas and you see dudes popping bottles all the time that right. are older. So I'm like, wow, I don't need a while out right now. I can just and totally. just focus on what I'm doing and like reach all my goals or have zero regrets. And I haven't drank and it's been like eight years, I think. In oh May. shit, That's seven eight crazy. years, eight years, I think. Damn. Yeah, just stop. The there's a documentary I watched on a flight the other day. Crash uh, Reel. No. Oh, I was going to say, because that's, that's like one of the reasons too, like seeing what happened to my homie who did, he's in Crash Reel. I was there that day. He had a TBI. What What's Crash Reel? It's about my friend Kevin Pierce. He had a traumatic brain injury. Yeah. Um, and that's another thing. So I was there. I saw it horrible. almost died. Everything. And you saw like, this thing happen to this dude? Yeah, I was there. What, what does he do? Double cork right to his toe edge and whoosh. Oh, shit. Like broke his eye socket like TBI to try and make right, yeah so anyways fuck. like so I was there so that's another thing it's like man it can be taken away like pop like, just like let's that. just do everything I can to be as best and healthy as I can no I sorry I didn't mean to cut you no, off no I mean that sounds like a great it's called crash what crash real crash real this one was called uh like honestly I don't know it was about climbing <laughs> have you free have solo you, free solo did you watch it of course that shit when the way we started this podcast you're like I, I just want to go as hard as I can and live the life I want to. I'm down to ride a fucking but I wear a wheelchair. His, his is neck. His it, is, you like listen to him talk. And that was what was the most interesting part about that documentary was like kind of getting a glimpse of his personality and the way he looks at things. Like there's that one part which is his, he says like, I had a girlfriend and she said, I would be, what am I going to do if you die? I'll be all right. It's going to be so hard if you die. And he says, no, you'll get over it. You'll find somebody else. He like, did. That's what he said. Something like that. And I'm like, like he just shows how his <laughs> mind works. But it was like a lot of that shit was blunt and true. Like he was yeah. like, oh, I just started dating this girl and she wants me to like quit doing what I love. And yeah. I'm like, I, I can't. Like I'm not going to give that up for you because what's going to, what, like I could get hit by a car tomorrow walking across the street yeah. or I could die trying to free climb this fucking yeah. terrifying 2,000 feet wall. And it's like, yeah, it's true. He's right. You but could. See, that's like the he, risk Travis is Rice. Travis Pastrana, uh, Alex Hennel, Holnel, I don't know how to say his last name, but they all like have like, they're the way their minds work are just different, mm -hmm. right? Like Pastrana is crazy. Just is the they legend. Just jumped out of an airplane with no, no parachute. parachute. Fucking psychopath, yo. <laughs> That's fucking psychopath shit. Right yeah. there. But he's figured it. It's all figured out. Like to him, it's not probably not crazy. Yeah. No, no, no. It's just there's a difference of like stupid and like thought out. Totally. I don't know. But I mean that guy in his defense, was literally spending like months practicing the route over and oh, over yeah. and over and over again. But he knew like, every nook and cranny yeah. of that thing. But still, and he did it, like, they don't even talk about it, like, how fast he did yeah. it. Yeah, why like, did it happen so it quick? It's like three and a half hours, I think he climbed it or yeah. something. Like, it was under, I think it was under four hours. He like flew up that thing. That shit was, not, I mean, yeah, you want to get it over <laughs> with. You're like, I'm going to die up here. <laughs> I need to get the fuck out of here. But still, like, imagine like, but his mentality is what I'm saying. Like yeah. you, the the mentality of uh, understanding what your passion is and chasing it, no matter what the cost, or yeah. not letting anything destruct that shit. You I think know it's I mean? like it's risk assessment, right? Like you got to understand and be okay with the consequences. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. He was okay. If worst case scenario happened, he was okay with it. Ha, ha, what, is there anything that that's been too much for you to be like, yeah, fuck that, I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. Yeah, like it was like. Right after Vancouver Olympics, like, kind of, like, start. I'm like, oh, maybe a triple in pipe. Now I'm like, nah. No go? I don't want to do a triple. It's not worth it to me. I don't really care. I think it look. There's been one Chinese kid tried some. They just don't look cool, and I don't really care that much. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's all just, right. Like, it doesn't really interest me. Yeah. It did for a while. Yeah. It doesn't really interest me right. anymore. Huh. Fuck. This shit's... This is a good podcast. We talked for a minute. A lot of random stuff I probably spewed out. No, nah, that's fine. We got two How hours. How long is that? Two hours. That's good. It's not bad. That's a good podcast. I want to. I want to be able to let um, the Q and A thing happen. Um, Dave, should I try to do the thing with the Q and A today? Do I test it? No. He's sleeping. Dave's watching basketball. I put him to sleep. No, it's because there ain't no basketball on. He, He's it's on tonight? Rockets Warriors. Oh, yeah, because game set. Dude, it could be all game sevens on Sunday. Yo, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's because Iowa doesn't have anything. Iowa doesn't have anything. Huh? Yeah, there could be three game sevens on Sunday. 
Sunday. Yeah. Dave said it's three, game seven's on Sunday. Okay, hold on. Hey, try it out. All right, I'll try it out. So before I do this shit, uh, Dave, the reason why Dave's not paying attention to this podcast is because we can hear ourselves in our headset, but it's actually mad quiet for him. Like he can't really hear what we're saying over there. (laughs) Well, I was distracted because again, I have really bad ADHD Uh and I looked over and he was jamming, bro. He's like, (laughs) he's listening. And I started wondering, like I'm trying to talk. I can't remember if you were talking or I was trying to talk. I wonder what he's listening he's to really, right now. Is it hip hop? Is it rock? He's just putting like an instrumental <laughs> behind us talking to the podcast. He's like, yeah. And I kind of was like, kind of like point out to you. And then he kind of stopped. Yeah. That's funny. But he had fuck. like air, you had your AirPods on. You didn't even have like good quality headphones. Yo, like, AirPods are fire quality, yo. For yeah, jamming know, out right I know, now. I know. Like, he's have some noise canceling. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I feel it's you. a little different. Uh, you know what sucks though? We're off topic. And you know, an iPhone cancels out the background noise. Like, there's a, there's a, there's something in an iPhone that when you're talking on the phone with it to your ear, it blocks out a lot of like, if you guys are talking, right. it would block it out. You won't be able to hear it oh, so yeah, much. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, right. Why could they not put that technology into AirPods? Because no joke, AirPods are only good to talk on the phone. If you're not moving. If you're in one area and it's quiet. Because I'd be at the airport and like my mom or my someone or I'm talking to my girlfriend, they'd be like, they can hear somebody that's like on the at the gate over mm-hmm. better than they can hear me. And I was like, man, if they just had this sick, cause I love them to talk on the phone. But Dude, I hate, I, I hate when I'm on my skateboard and it's just like, <laughs> and they're like I can't hear you. I'm like, oh, I literally have to go no speed at all to talk to you when I could just listen to you. And when I talk, you should be able to hear me, but that shit can't handle. Yeah. Um, just talk to your boy, Stevie, Stevie was, and see what's happening. See if he can, you know, I know. Talk to those boys over at Apple and fix that problem for us. <laughs> and give us enough. the plug. Yeah. And give us the plug. All right. So um, we're going to try something new because we yeah. have like this, we have this thing called Patreon, which is like our private community thing. It's like another, we have the private community, which you're a part of. Patreon is the way that they like support the podcast. So they like, chip in like five bucks a month to be a part of it. And then Dang. we give them access to the podcast like a week early. Okay. So what we want to do now and we haven't rolled it out yet, so this is definitely the worst way to try to do it. <laughs> but I do. I want to do a Q and A, which I've always done. Okay. But I'm gonna let them have access to the Q and A versus okay. everyone. So basically, like this is the end of the podcast. Did we get any questions? Yeah, I'm gonna ask you questions. Oh, we did. Or did you make them up? No, I have. Like people ask. <laughs> I know. People I'm ask saying people actually ask. Oh, yeah, like, they okay. really ask the questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, some dude tripped out. He couldn't even stop. Set, right. It was like run on sentences. Like, holy fuck, you have the half pipe king of the podcast. Uh, I wish I, I could think of a question. Literally, the next thing he says is like, how could he? Blah blah blah. And like he had a question. What? Well, what do you mean you can't think of a question? You just came up with one. But I anyway, like it. Uh, so people will hear this shit on Patreon only. Uh, so if you want to listen to your what I'm going to ask you, some different questions, some exclusive yeah. shit, you get patreoncom slash black cream. But before we end it, I always let uh, my guests pick a hashtag, right? To let, like, the listener, if the listener listened to two hours and five minutes of us rambling about your career and your life, which they should have, otherwise they're yeah. fucking idiots, then they're going to go to your last Instagram post, whatever it is at the time that they're listening right now. They're going to put this hashtag, they're going to tag me in it too. So at Ben Reverse World. <laughs> so when we see this hashtag pop up on your feed, we'll know that they listened to the whole episode. You know what I realized today, by the way? That your Instagram is Ben Real Verse World. Yeah. In my phone is Ben Verse Real World, and that's yeah, what I've always thought in my head. <laughs> and I was walking, I was walking down Hollywood Boulevard. I'm like, Ben Verse Real World, Real World's kind of weird. <laughs> and I was like, looked at your gram today, and I was like, oh, it's Ben Real. People verse say, it. World. I don't understand how people fucking say that. I Dude, don't know why, but mad I, people make bro, that mistake. I don't know why either, and it's. So funny to me, like, <laughs> bro, in my phone. Ben versus real world. Like, you think it's me versus the MTV show? <laughs> like, Robin, Ben. Robin would say that all the time. On Twitter. Robin would say it too. Hey, Ben, real versus world, or Ben, real <laughs> versus real world, versus real world. What the fuck you mean? I thought it was like, I like a joke, like, like. Ohio versus the world, <laughs> Detroit versus everyone. Yeah, Detroit Boy versus meets everyone. world. Yeah, like, it's like nope. a playoff. No, nope. that was just you. You invented that. What's up? Anyway, what's your hashtag? What do you want your hashtag to be? It could be anything you want in the world. You can pick it. I don't want to pick it. You have to. I, everybody you're, does you're it. You're the creative one. We should yep. make something up. Just spit something out. I That's what you're it. supposed to do. I'm not good. Anything that you come it's up too much with pressure. is no. It's not. No, it's not. He's thinking, ladies and gentlemen. If you're listening on audio. He's thinking of his hashtag <laughs> right now. This is how we're ending the podcast. I know. <laughs> Louis versus the world. <laughs> See, that's tight. <laughs> All right, so tag at Ben Real vs. World, hashtag Louis versus the world. 
VS, not don't spell out Louis verse. Verse VS, the <laughs> yeah. world. Yeah, not verse. Uh, and then that that way we know that you made it this far. But um, I'll be impressed. Yeah, I, it happens, bro, and it'll happen like ten months from now down the road when you're when you're like, what the fuck, Louis? Was, They'll be like, the world. it's taking me this long to finish that podcast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if people are listening, how do you want them to you know pay attention to what you're doing? What should they Louis Vito, everything. Louis Vito on Instagram, everything else. You on Twitter? Yeah. You do Twitter? Vito. Yeah. All right. Cool. Every randomly, and uh, mostly during college football season. You're you're shooting out the shit. Ohio State all day. Okay. The Ohio State. What uh, what I mean, what do you have planned for the future? What's the, what's the goals that you got? Planned I don't know, for man. I'm gonna keep snowboarding, trying to just keep figuring life out. That's why I say, what are you doing in LA? Just trying to figure life out. Right. I said it to so many people, but it is. I'm like, I don't know. Just going with the flow. Keep doing some stuff with Toyota. Hopefully, going out to the Olympics in Tokyo with them. Trying to get some documentary going for this project, this passion project I have. Maybe start a podcast. Lots. Who knows, dude? Lots. I just need to start buckling down. Tight. Trying to get my pro bono Instagram edits from you. I'm with it. We got people <laughs> in the community that probably do well, that. Well, I got to follow the dude. Kavika? Does he have cool Instagram? Dude, this shit's fucking fire. I'll show you some shit. I got to follow him. He just did a, a little tutorial that was like the ill shit where he just cut himself in half for no reason with the lightsaber. Just to do it. It fucking looks legit. All right, I gotta track it. All right, that's the uh, that's the end of this, and then I'm gonna switch over to the audio only or the uh, the Q and A only for Patreon people. It's a weird way to Sorry. do it, but we'll see if it happens. All right, let's try it. Hopefully, it'll, it'll, it'll like help me pay for rent in here, which is cool. So I like that's it. the goal. All right, switching over. Bye. That's it. The episode is done. Louis Vito is a genius. Thank you for coming through, man. That kid snowboards really fucking good. Makes me jealous because I'm a snowboarder. You know, not anymore. But I could still shred. I'm gonna shred with him this winter. We'll post a pic. Um, the rest of the interview, as you could hear, is available on our Patreon. It's exclusive. We asked him questions from the community, and as well as myself, I continue to ask him more questions because you know that's what I do for a living. You feel me? Um, so if you guys want to get access to the interview, the rest of the interview, the Q and A experience, it's available on our Patreon. Patreon.com/slash/BlackWithNoCream. It's only going to be available there. We're going to start doing this from now on. Um, with the goal of just providing a little bit more value to our Patreon supporters. So if you do support us on Patreon, thank you very much. You guys help us keep the lights on here in the studio, helps us elevate this group in the community and allows us to, you know, push it a little bit farther forward. So patreon.com slash black window cream. The whole shit's there. Shop BWNC.com if you want to get some merch. Uh, yeah, new episode every single Wednesday and Sunday. We're excited about the podcast and, and the new changes that we just introduced on Patreon. So fuck with us. All right, cool. That's it.